Good morning and welcome to this webinar organized by the California State University San Bernardino College of Education through the Watson and Associates Literacy Center at CSUSB. We are honored to have both Jim and Judy Watson present uh, on this special occasion. Um, we're also honored to have Dr. Judy White, the superintendent for Riverside County Office of Education. On March 19, 2020, an executive order from the governor of California required every California resident to stay sheltered in place as a result of COVID-19 pandemic that has spread across California communities. Residents were to leave their homes only to get essential needs or if they have to work uh, as part of the category classified as essential workers. With this order came an immediate closure of all California K-12 higher education institutions. And many of us believed that the stay at home order was a short term measure that could last for two or three weeks and we return to our normal lives. But today is exactly basically seven months since that executive order went out. And many of the California K-12 schools, as well as higher education institutions, remain closed. And many of the businesses remain closed. With the shutdown that came as a result of this pandemic, those of us in the education field needed to continue to provide learning to our students. Both higher education and K-12 students needed to continue to learn. So we scrambled to deliver online learning across the board. School districts quickly began to give away computers and other technology tools to help their students access their learning experiences remotely from their homes. Teachers had to learn how to continue to deliver their instruction online. A group that was mostly overlooked are you parents who many of you needed to continue to work from home and also provide support to your K-12 students who must now learn from home. Many of the parents have struggled to balance these demands of work, home life, and playing teacher for their children who now learn from home. In fact, many of our CSUSB faculty and staff fall into this category. They have children in the K-12 schools whom they need to support in their learning experiences, yet we expect them to continue to do their jobs from home. Over the past few months, we have come to appreciate the struggles many of these parents are going through in order to support their children while doing the many other things that confront them. Lessons learned from engagement with our own faculty, staff, and students who are parents have compelled us to develop this webinar as a way of providing you with the needed support to continue to help your children and to help them thrive and learn despite the challenges of COVID-19 and learning in the virtual space. It is our hope that you will find today's webinar helpful as you continue to navigate the challenge of being parents, as well as teachers for your children during this time of global pandemic. I want to say thank you for responding to our invitation and for joining us today for this webinar. Let me also welcome Dr. Judy White, the superintendent of Riverside County Department of Education. Dr. White is a distinguished educator whose contributions to the Inland Empire has spanned decades. A strong advocate for educational opportunities for all children and a highly celebrated CSUSB alumna. Dr. White is here today to show her support to you as parents for all you're doing to support your children's education during this pandemic. Let me invite Dr. Judy White to say a few words to the parents, Dr. White. Thank you so much. I'd like to welcome the parents. It is such a pleasure to have you on this webinar. You've taken time from your schedule. 
because you care about your child and their success in this age of digital learning. I would also like to thank Cal State University at San Bernardino and their education department for creating such an opportunity for our parents in the Inland Empire. My word for today is together, juntos. It's an adverb talking about us being in close association and as an adjective, being well organized. This conference will help us to grow. I want the, the parents to know that in Riverside County, we have launched an all for one campaign, making sure that each individual student has a device. We also want you to know that if you go to the RCOE website, there's a parent summit that was held and their, and their uh, offerings have been archived and you can go and see some of the, the uh, presentations. We also would like to, you to know if you have trouble, you can call uh, RCOE and say you want a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. We actually have a department that's willing to talk to parents, talk them through the system to make sure that your child is learning. So I want to close with uh, a poem that I will coin as together, juntos. We are all in this together, learning new ways to achieve. We are all in this together and it will get better, I believe. When we acknowledge together, there's so many things that are new, but when we come together, we learn how to make it through. There is so much more to distance learning than Zooming and platforms. It works the best when parents and staff and communication is the norm. My hope for you is that today you will get the resources you need and may your tools and strategies fully increase so all of our children succeed. So today your time will be well spent. And I want you to know as a Riverside County Superintendent of Schools, I thank you for being here and I look forward to your learning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. White. I was speaking and didn't realize that I had muted myself. <laughs> I want to introduce uh, Robert Nava, our Vice President at CSUSB for University Advancement. Robert, please. Good, yes, thank you, Dean, and good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. This morning, I have the honor of introducing two very special friends to the university, Judy and Jim Watson. Since 2003, Judy and Jim have been generous donors and advocates for the university, for the College of Education, and for our Literacy Center, which provides the tools and resources for our families in the communities we serve. Their leadership and advocacy with the Literacy Center has generated significant support to enhance the College of Education and our programs. In addition to their long support to CSUSB and the community, the Watsons are dynamic benefactors of public art in the city of San Bernardino. Jim was instrumental in partnering with the city of San Bernardino to display CSUSB student art citywide. They also support the university's Coyote Conservatory, a performance arts outreach project led by our University Theater Arts Department. In 2010 and 2015, the Watsons were awarded with the university, the Cal State University's highest accolade that they bestow on individuals, the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. We really should refer to them as doctor, doctors, Jim and Judy Watson. Judy serves as co-president of J.R. Watson and Associates Development Corporation and is an ardent supporter of education, the arts. Judy was born and raised in Los Angeles, but her connection to the Latino culture was nurtured early in her childhood. Judy received her bachelor's degree in psychology and social behavior from the University of California, Irvine. Jim is the president and CEO of Watson and Associates. And Jim also was the former chairman of the board of directors for the university's philanthropic foundation. Jim's a graduate of San Jose State University and 
Started his career in real estate as the chief real estate appraiser and director of real estate at Downey Savings before launching his own company in the early 1970s. Since its inception, Watson and Associates has focused on high quality community sensitive development of mixed use, residential, retail, and office complexes, exceeding over $1 billion in market value. They have more than 35 developments in California, Oregon, Idaho, and Washington. JR and Associates prides itself on developing projects that set new and higher standards for the community. And we also appreciate that Watson and Associates are partners also, uh, I should say neighbors of the university with the Glen, a high luxury uh, facility for students and community members across the street from our campus. So we please join me as we welcome these great friends of the university. And let me ask Jim and Judy to say a few words. Jim? Jim, you are, you are muted. Jim, you need to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Robert, thank you very much for that uh, very gracious uh, and unearned <laughs> compliments of Judy and me. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Good morning and afternoon to everyone. Many things are, in, are an essential in life, but other than food, water, and air to breathe, nothing is more important than educating our children and you know, grandchildren. Studies have shown that a child studies have shown, I'm sorry, that, that studies have shown that a child's educational success before the third grade is a strong predictor of how well a student will do in life, in personal life and business life. I had my share of challenges as a young child. And because of that early intervention, I was extremely fortunate and was able to move uh, forward in life. However, more than 70% of today's youth do not meet new state standards in English, language, arts, and literacy. Combine these with the challenges of the global epidemic we are in that forces many parents to figure out how to manage home life, be able to sufficiently work in this workplace and have oversight, oversight for their children's daily educational activities. It appears and is daunting at the very least. My wife, at Jude, my wife Judy and I not only understand the importance of education, but collectively with all of you must juggle the complexity of distance, distant learning that can be very laborious. With this in mind, we are hopeful that the academic experts that you will hear from over the next three days will provide practical ad advice that can pivot you to a bit easier uh, problem solving with you and your family. We do not want your children's education to be compromised by these difficult circumstances. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Judy, please. Hello, buenos dias, bienvenidos a todos. Thank you for, for attending this, this amazing seminar. Um, and uh, Robert, what a wonderful introduction you made. Um, thank you. Um, Jim and I are delighted and honored that you have joined us for this webinar. The tools and advice provided over the next three days will not only help navigate uh, the challenges of managing your children's academic workload while at home, but will make life a little bit easier for you as well. Education makes such a difference in the lives of everyone, and Jim and I are, are living testimony to that. Our parents did not go to college. I struggled much myself with uh, dyslexia and um, in, my, in my formative years. Uh, regretfully, they weren't able to identify it, so it, it became a challenge into my adult 
uh, life. Um, uh, Jim comes from a single parent disadvantaged background. Despite these hurdles, we were fortunate to work hard in the classroom and with the support of our teachers and families, we were able to, ch to change the narrative. We want you to know that you are not alone. Juntos, estamos juntos. We are together, working on this together. Uh, you are not alone in this journey as parents. Everyone is having a difficult uh, time meeting the variety of expectations in their lives. Therefore, we are here to assist in this unprecedented time in our world. Distance learning can be nebulous early on, but we believe the information that you will receive will help you ease your mind about your child's ongoing success during this pandemic. Thank you again for the honor of, of being here today and being a part of this wonderful program. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Jim. And thanks to Dr. White and uh, uh, Robert. Um, we are ready to get started with the real thing. So let me introduce our first presenters, Dr. Nicole Klemau and Dr. Uh, Jacqueline Romano. Dr. Klemau uh, and Romano are from the Teacher Education and Foundations Department of our university's College of Education. So I will turn over to Dr. Klemau and Dr. Romano. Buenos dias. Privet and bienvenidos. Uh, welcome to our session on tips for families supporting children in a virtual classroom. My name is Dr. Nicole Climo and with me is uh, Dr. Uh, Jacqueline Romano. And we're going to work through um, our session. Gracias, Nicole. Buenos dias. Soy la doctora Romano y el día de hoy es un placer de participar en este seminario con ustedes. Juntos nos vamos a ayudar y juntos estamos para servirles. Nuestro tema es consejos para la familia. It's so, we're so excited to be with you here today because you are the person that can help your children so much by being a positive force in their life and providing them with a structure and routine during these uncertain times. Es de verdad un placer que ustedes puedan ser la fuerza positiva detrás del aprendizaje de sus niños. Con una estructura y rutina establecida, ustedes pueden ayudar al su éxito académico de sus estudiantes. So one of the first things that you can do is make a space for learning uh, in your home. Um, this place needs to be quiet, comfortable, and organized, and preferably a dedicated space for learning, um, different from where students play games or watch television. And it's important to keep those noise and distractions to a minimum so students can concentrate and hear the teacher during instruction. Una de las primeras recomendaciones que les pedimos es que ustedes desarrollen un espacio, hagan un espacio para este aprendizaje de los estudiantes. Dedicando un espacio donde el estudiante o la estudiante pueda tener el lugar para hacer sus tareas, que sea callado, organizado y confortable, ayuda a que se concentren. De preferencia, le pedimos un lugar que esté lejos de la televisión o donde haya gente alrededor o donde haya juegos de video. Por favor, mantenga el ruido al más mínimo y las distracciones también al más mínimo. Sabemos que es imposible en este momento tener un lugar callado, pero trataremos de hacer lo posible dentro de nuestras casas de encontrar un rinconcito donde los estudiantes puedan participar. We want to make sure that children have all the materials they need, um, including a stable Wi-Fi connection, um, login information in terms of how to log into their class, um, either through Canvas or Zoom or Google Meets, um, a, a PDF reader, which is a portable document uh, reader, um, and then a note-taking app, um, Evernote, uh, some things where it allows students to capture 
uh, with the teacher is saying. Um, a dedicated device that doesn't have any games on it and most of the school computers that uh, school districts are providing are perfect for, for this. And then also paper pencils and notebook construction paper so that students have um, things at the ready should they need to um, make some foldables or uh, write, take notes. La siguiente sugerencia es que asegúrese de que los eh, niños y las niñas tengan los materiales necesarios para el aprendizaje. Esto incluye uh, la conexión estable de la internet, tratar de buscar la clave de acceso a la escuela, un lector de lecturas en PDF, eh, una aplicación que le ayude a su hijo a tomar notas, una computadora o tableta que no tenga juegos incluidos y en este caso las computadoras o tabletas que se han proveído por las escuelas serían una buena, uh, un buen artículo para que no tengan la distracción. Además de papeles, lápices, cuadernos, papel de construcción, material que necesitan en la escuela para hacer sus actividades diarias. The next part is to set a routine. Um, develop a written schedule for the day and for the week that includes short breaks for students. Um, help your children prioritize tasks, set goals, make lists, and meet deadlines. It's important too to try to maintain similar routines as if they were still going to school. Set alarms for waking up, maybe dress for school. Be sure that they brush their teeth and their hair have breakfast, and then also have snacks and lunches throughout the day. Además de la tecnología, el, la, el espacio, trate de mantener y establezca una rutina diaria. Es importante que los estudiantes mantengan un horario de clases diarias, un, uh, un horario que le, le mantenga durante la semana las actividades y las muestre. También ponga las horas de descanso. Los estudiantes necesitan horas de descanso. Ayude también a que los niños aprendan a, priorita, a priorizar las tareas. ¿Qué es lo más importante que se tiene que entregar durante el día o el día siguiente? Haga una lista con metas. Haga la lista de las tareas que se requieren de la semana y anote cuándo estas deben de ser entregadas. También mantenga una rutina tal es como si fuesen a la escuela. Es importante que mantengan esa rutina para que no se queden atrás. Por ejemplo, ponga usted la alarma todos los días. Haga que los niños se vistan a, para si fueran a ir a la escuela. Por favor, eh, promueva el que vayan a lavarse los dientes, a peinarse, a arreglarse, a listar sus útiles, a tomar el desayuno y también proveer un almuerzo con el cual pueda mantenerse durante el día. Hágalo lo más cerca posible, como si fuera en la escuela. It's important too that we monitor the, um, our children's engagement. Uh, check to see that the audio and the camera are working. Check whether the student's eyes are following the screen and the teacher. Encourage the child to take notes and encourage the child to ask questions during the online session. Durante la sesión de clase, asegúrese que usted esté al tanto y monitoree la atención que tenga el niño en la lección. Para empezar, verifiquemos que el sonido y la cámara estén funcionando. Revise también que los niños estén poniendo atención a la pantalla. Anime a sus hijos a que tomen notas, hagan preguntas y correspondan con la maestra en las actividades. And then, of course, we want to schedule those breaks that allow children to actually get up and move away from the computer, um, engage in some phys physical activity, so that they're not seated sedentary all day long. The brain needs movement as well as learning to, uh, to be successful in, in college and careers. 
Tal como si fueran a la escuela, los niños toman horas de descanso. Unos pequeños descansos les ayuda para a despejar su cerebro. El cerebro necesita despegarse de la computadora por un momento y activar el cerebro en otras formas. Entonces, anime a sus hijos a que tomen el descanso para jugar, para hacer el almuerzo o para la actividad física requerida durante el día. And of course, as Dr. White said, it's very important to communicate with the school and the teacher. We want our children to be able to advocate for what they need and ask those questions of the teacher. Um, as a parent, you can ask the teacher what he or she needs from you and your child. And if you need some resources, be sure to reach out to the school's um, Parent Teacher Association, as well as the school directly. We're all here for your child's success. Aparte, también les, uh, les queremos compartir que es muy importante que se mantengan al, con, al tanto y en contacto con los maestros. No espere que el maestro le llame a usted. Si usted tiene dudas o tiene preguntas o necesita algo, comuníquese con ellos. Haga también que los, sus estudiantes le llamen al maestro o le pidan lo que ellos necesiten. Haga preguntas de lo que usted necesita, lo que ellos necesitan de usted. Y si necesita algún material o algún recurso, no duden en llamar a su maestro del salón de clase. También la junta directiva de padres o los concilios educativos pueden ser un punto de apoyo para ustedes. Juntos pueden ayudarse. And then, of course, it's important to support that off-screen time. We, we underestimate how much learning can happen when we encourage students to just sit and read a book um, as a child sits in our lap. Um, and even when we just sit and talk about what they learned during the day. So we want to encourage students to do some creative writing and some storytelling and plan some off-screen activities with your child, including board games, puzzles, or maybe even a game of charades. ¿Y qué podemos hacer después del día de clases? Pues tenemos la oportunidad de apoyarlos durante el tiempo que tengamos libre. Y yo sé que a veces es un poco difícil tener un poquito de extra tiempo. Pero en estos momentos es importante que usted conviva con su hija. Mientras ellos pasan mayor parte del día en la computadora, ayúdeles a que promuevan la lectura en libros, utilizando libros reales o virtuales si necesiten. Ayúdeles a que hagan uh, el esfuerzo de expresarse, um, de que platiquen con sus hijos o con los familiares sobre lo que está pasando en la escuela qué tipo de aprendizaje van, han llevado, qué es lo que están aprendiendo, qué es lo que están haciendo en la escuela. También apoye a que se de, um, puedan utilizar la escritura, no nada más eh, por medio de la computadora, pero con medio de el, las manos. Es muy importante que ellos escriban y se mantengan activos. La, la idea que les podría yo proveer aquí es utilizando cuentos o historias o que hagan preguntas. Planea actividades que puedan involucrar a toda la familia, como los juegos de mesa, los rompecabezas, la actuación y la creación de libros. And then of course we want to maintain those connections with our friends, with friends and family. So encourage children to video chat or text message with friends and family. Um, ask uh, friends and family to inquire uh, from the child what they're doing at school and promote collaboration when completing homework. So if there are siblings in the, in the, in the home, they could work together to complete each other's homework. Ahora, también hay otra parte que es importante. Juntos hay que promover la interacción entre familia y amigos. Anime a que los niños se comuniquen con familia, con miembros cercanos a ustedes por medio de mensaje de texto o si usted permite el uso de las videollamadas. Pida también a los familiares o amigos a que sean parte del aprendizaje de los niños. 
ellos pueden preguntarle a sus hijos qué es lo que están aprendiendo y de esa forma involucrar al estudiante a que piense qué es lo que están haciendo durante el día. Juntos promueva la, co la colaboración para hacer las tareas. Nosotros sabemos que siempre es importante hacer tareas en compañía. Nos anima y nos ayuda a ser mejores, a expresarnos oralmente y en la escritura. And celebrate your child's work. Uh, display it around the house. Uh, make sure you tell them what a great job they're doing. Reinforce their efforts and hard work. Uh, and empower your children to see learning as something that they can control and that curiosity will lead them anywhere. Y bueno, ¿por qué no también apreciar el trabajo y el esfuerzo que hacen sus hijos durante el día? Yo sé que es difícil a veces tratar de hacer un trabajo en la computadora y mostrarlo, pero los trabajos que hacen con sus manitas en casa, ¿por qué no celebrarlo? Colgámoslos en el refrigerador o donde los podamos ver. Reafirme estos esfuerzos y el buen trabajo. Los anima y los mantiene al tanto de su educación. Apoya a sus hijos a que mantengan el control de su aprendizaje y también para que les cause más curiosidad, que los pueda llevar a donde ellos quieran. La imaginación es muy importante durante estos tiempos. And sometimes we need to remember that we can teach our children so much. So host a genius hour at home. Teach your children how to bake cookies or tortillas. Make some Play-Doh. Teach your children some games, maybe chess, or, or to learn to fish. Um, teach a child how to dance the salsa or the quick step. Um, take a, a, a field trip to another place using Google Maps. Maybe teach your child how to knit or crochet or embroider. And you can always take a virtual visit to an art gallery or a museum. Bueno, después de la clase y del tiempo que tengamos en casa con nuestros niños, hay que hacerlo un poco más animado. Por ejemplo, les sugerimos que ustedes ayuden a sus estudiantes o a sus hijos en los tiempos libres a que hagan viajes a otro lugar por medio de la tecnología usando los Google Maps, los mapas virtuales. Enseñar a sus hijos a tejer, a bordar, a pintar, a cocinar, a hacer visitas a museos o, o, art, o galerías de arte que en línea podemos tener acceso sin salir de nuestras casas. ¿Por qué no también enseñarles a cocinar, a hacer responsabilidades dentro de la casa o qué hacer? Mantener el ritmo de vida que podremos tener y involucrarlos todos en el aprendizaje, tanto de la casa como de la escuela. And finally, we have many, many free uh, learning resources that you can find online. And this is just a list of several of those by elementary, middle, and high school. And these are things that are free learning sources that students can access to support what they learn during the day. Y bueno, para terminar, les damos una lista, una recomendación. Uh, hay muchas uh, páginas y recursos gratuitos para el aprendizaje. Hemos dividido en estas tres columnas donde ustedes pueden identificar el nivel académico, ya sea de primaria, secundaria y preparatoria. Estos son uh, recursos gratuitos por medio de en línea, los cuales pueden tener acce uh, acceso inmediato y ayudar a sus estudiantes. Espero que esta presentación haya sido de su agrado y hayamos cubierto o abarcado los temas que ustedes me estén preguntando o tengan preguntas. So, gracias y spasiva. I'm going to pass the session on to Dr. Gregory Richardson, Dr. Nam, and Dr. Romano. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you so much, Dr. Climo. Really appreciate that. And I appreciate each and every one of you as parents who are taking this initiative to uh, come to our webinar. We're so glad that you're here and hopefully you will learn a lot of tips that 
uh, will help you navigate your child successfully through their educational pursuits. Um, supporting children with special needs and distance learning in collaboration with teachers. I'm Dr. Greg Richardson and my uh, uh, colleague is Dr. Uh, Sang Nam. We'll hear from him in just a moment. Next slide, please. Este, buenos días otra vez. Eh, yo voy a ayudarles con la traducción eh, para la educación especial. El tema de, del Dr. Gregory Richardson y Dr. Nan es apoyando a los niños con necesidades especiales en el aprendizaje a distancia en colaboración con los maestros. Today we're going to talk to you about the learning environment, its importance. We're going to talk about collaborating with teachers. We're going to share with you various learning strategies, as well as talk about assistive technology. And then we will give you some resources as well. Los objetivos de esta presentación son cómo crear un ambiente de aprendizaje en el hogar, cómo y con qué colaborar con los maestros, estrategias de aprendizaje, la tecnología de asistencia y recursos educativos. The environment. Dr. Nam, would you please? You have to unmute your microphone. I'm Dr. Nam from our College of Education, Special Education Program. Good morning. Um, our children with special needs, particularly children with autism, are doing better in workstation. Oh, you expecting me to uh, finish here? If you want me to, it's up to yeah, you. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I already to... have the slide in the Spanish, so I can go. Yeah, on. I want you. Okay, I want you. What is up to you? Yeah, you know. I might add on the furniture. It's important to make sure that you have a height that's uh, a good height for the child to work at, not too tall, not too short, and you can do that in a number of different ways with the seating, with the um, um, old books and so forth. You want to make sure the child's completely comfortable. Um, Dr. Nam can speak to the location, how important that is. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, workstation. Okay? So in a workstation, they are less uh, distracted and can focus on the tasks they are assigned to do. Otherwise, uh, they are easily distracted uh, because there are so many items and moving objects that distracts their attention to the work. Uh, so in a workstation, they can focus on the task they are assigned to do. Uh, Dr. Richardson, you can, uh, you know, uh, talk about temperature and you. Mm -hmm. The location is very important as well. Um, children can easily get distracted. Um, you want to make sure that you have a nice corner location for them or something set up in the hallway or a cubicle something where they have their own individual workspace so they can focus on their studies. That's so important. I wanna to move to the area of temperature. This is very important also. Uh, understanding what your child's needs are. If the household is cool and the child does not like cool, they can actually dress in layers. And that way, as they need to, they can begin to take sweaters or jackets off in order to be comfortable in the home. You want to make sure that they are actually comfortable and you can regulate the temperature as your choice is based upon the child's needs. The learning platform, I want to speak about that as well. This technology world that we're in requires us using technology platforms in a number of different ways. Children have their cell phones, they have their laptops, they have their tablets and so forth. One of the things that's overlooked is the importance of keeping that device cool making sure that there's proper ventilation for that device. You can also purchase very reasonably under $20, a little tablet that goes underneath the computer um, that would actually provide a cooling mechanism for the computer. But if the computer gets too hot, that's gonna affect its functionality. You wanna make sure the computer is actually cool. Quietness. It's difficult to study when children are distracted by the television, the radio, uh, other things in the household. And 
they're not always as fortunate to have a household where there are not many other children sometimes. And so noise can be a real factor. So you have to find a place where the child can actually have a quiet environment. There are children also that operate better in a noisy environment. So speak with your child, find out exactly what it is that they need in order to be comfortable. Uh, electronics in the home, sometimes having things near the computer can interfere with the reception. Uh, cell phones, uh, other devices that are streaming, they can affect the device that the child's on. Even things like displaying the child's picture during the time that they are actually in class can affect the transfer of information that they need to receive. Gracias, Dr. Richardson and Dr. Nan. El ambiente para los niños con el, eh, eh, autismo o otras uh, uh, discapacidades de aprendizaje es muy importante que pongan atención en tres áreas. Una es el área de trabajo. Asegurarse que los muebles sean confortables a la altura eh, que sea uh, justa para ellos que ellos sientan que pueden trabajar, la ubicación donde sea un lugar exclusivo, donde tengan un uh, espacio donde no haya tantos disturbios o haya ruido. Es muy importante que ellos se mantengan enfocados en su lectura. Entonces se les recomienda que tengan un lugar donde haya menos distracciones. Al mismo tiempo, les pedimos que chequen la temperatura. Los, los, um, la ropa es muy importante. Ponerles ropa que sea confortable. Si hace mucho frío o hace mucho calor, ellos pueden decir qué tipo de ropa eh, necesitan y qué tanto necesita o ajustar usted la temperatura dentro de su casa. La plataforma de aprendizaje también sufre con el calor o con el frío. Es muy importante que, que se pueda ubicar el aparato electrónico, ya sea el teléfono, eh, la tableta o la computadora, debajo de una mm, enfriadora o de un ventilador para que el equipo siempre funcione al uh, 100%. El calor afecta los, la tecnología y si está el, el estudiante trabajando, puede cerrarse el, el, um, la tecnología o el programa porque está muy caliente. Otra parte que les recomiendan es el espacio y la tranquilidad dentro de la familia y los aparatos electrónicos. Se pide que se mantenga a la familia ayudando al estudiante de la forma en más eh, se requiera con el, el acceso de él. Hay estudiantes que quieren tener el ruido, pero hay otros estudiantes que prefieren el silencio. Usted sabe más que nada qué es lo que su estudiante necesita y provea esa facilidad dentro de su casa. El, el aparato electrónico, si es alguien que está atrás en casa jugando o teniendo música, limitar todos estos ruidos que son extras y que pueden de, inquietar o perder la atención del estudiante. Okay. Uh, an important uh, premise of collaboration is that uh, your teacher you need your help and you need your teacher's help. Okay, so your teacher uh, need to know the child's schedule and routines. Also, uh, you need to provide information about the child's home uh, environments. Uh, there are many uh, places actually uh, in home, uh, such as uh, kitchen and living room and bedroom, you know, and uh, out uh, backyard, etc. Okay, there are many uh, places at home, so you need to uh, you know tell, uh, provide information about those you know um, uh, places and activities, right? Activities. Uh, you know, usually a uh, child engaged in uh, those uh, places, okay? So, you know, individual, you know, uh, home and has different places, right? We call ecological inventories. 
you know, teachers' needs are those places and activities the child, uh, your child is engaging in. Okay, and uh, and uh, you know the uh, uh, with that, you know, uh, you know the kitchen, you know, activities. One of the kitchen activity is uh, cooking. You know, cooking is uh, really uh, important. It involves uh, gross motor and fine motor. It involves uh, measuring. It, it involves a uh, reading. Uh, it involving you know social uh, skills, and uh, even you know it involves the uh, purchasing. See you know, cooking has uh, uh, multiple uh, useful you know skills uh, children can learn. So uh, you know. The uh, teachers need, you know, uh, what kind of supports available uh, home uh, for cooking or other, you know, activities. Okay, and the teachers also needs uh, parents' input about target behaviors, right? Target behaviors. A target behavior is the behavior uh, that is not present at the moment uh, the child is uh, to learn. And you and your teacher wants to see uh, from the child that is the target behavior, right? Target behaviors must be uh, related to child IP goals, right? So, uh, you know, um, it is important to identify target behaviors relating to child IP uh, goals. In that sense, you need to know what's your child's uh, IEP goals, right? Uh, how the child is performing, uh, you know, on the target behaviors. That's also important information. And uh, activities are taking place uh, at home, like I mentioned, uh, you know, in the beginning. And uh, how many uh, words uh, he can independently uh, read in a social story you know, that kind of information uh, your teachers need to know, okay? And then uh, also, you know, uh, you know, uh, teachers uh, need, you and teachers, you know, need to discuss about uh, environmental cues and prompts, right? So prompts and cues taking place before the target behavior. All right, so you know what kind of a prompts a child's needs for the ta target behavior do you need to discuss with your uh, teacher? And the prompts comes uh, with many different forms, uh, such as uh, physical uh, prompts and verbal prompts. It can be a picture, it can be gesture, it can be signs, okay? Many different forms of prompts. Without prompts, your uh, child would not successfully uh, engage in and start the target behavior. So somebody has to provide the prompts. Of course, the teacher you know, can provide you know, verbal prompts, but uh, teachers cannot provide the physical prompts. You know? yeah, so that's the reason you need to be you know, next to the child and need to provide you know, uh, prompts, all right? So, uh, so cues and prompts are needed for those target behavior. Somebody has to provide uh, those prompts uh, for the successful target behaviors. Okay. Uh, and then rewards. Okay. After the uh, target behavior, somebody has to provide the rewards. Okay. Your teacher needs someone, uh, you know, actually can deliver the rewards for the target behavior, okay? Uh, rewards come with uh, different forms. You know, I teach my students uh, with this acronym, uh, E-A-T-S-S, -S, you know? E stands for edible, A stands for activities, and T stands for tangible, and S uh, stands for sensory, uh, the other S stands for uh, social. So it covers all different types of rewards and uh, not one or two rewards. You need to have inventories of rewards, okay? According to those EATS.
SS. So you're a teacher and you need to find out powerful and effective and working uh, rewards for the target behavior, all right? Many children, they are not engaging in target behavior because they are not uh, properly prompted and they are not properly rewarded for their behavior, okay? If that kind of a no learning uh, experience extend long time, children have, you know, going to a learn a learned helplessness, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, children uh, need to be in a good uh, learning environment with those prompts and rewards, right? And uh, many children misbehave uh, and not following your instruction because uh, their behaviors are not guided by prompts and not followed by proper uh, rewards. So I like to emphasize importance of uh, prompts and rewards. I think that's uh, what I covered. Okay, next. Thank you. ¿Cómo colaborar con los maestros cuando tenemos niños con necesidades especiales en el aprendizaje? Eh, el ambiente y el lugar en el hogar son muy importantes. Indique a su maestra o maestro de su hijo el lugar en donde su estudiante va a, a, a trabajar y va a, a realizar las actividades del día. Si va a ser en el comedor, en la recámara o en la sala. Es importante que el maestro sepa en dónde está haciendo la tarea y los trabajos del día. También es muy importante establecer rutinas y actividades que mantengan al estudiante involucrado durante el día. Estas actividades y rutinas también se deben de apegar al plan individualizado del estudiante, donde se pueden alcanzar tam también las metas y los objetivos que requiere el estudiante. Es muy importante que usted también le eh, pregunte al maestro cuáles son las actividades y las rutinas que se deben de mantener dentro de la casa. Él o ella le pueden proveer con una lista de todas las uh, metas que se deben de alcanzar. El maestro es muy importante en este proceso y usted como padre al preguntar qué es lo que se debe de hacer en casa para que el estudiante pueda alcanzar el nivel académico y el rendimiento que se requiere dentro de su plan individualizado. También es importante que se enfoque en la conducta y poner eh, en el punto de enfoque cómo alcanzar la conducta que se requiere durante el día. Es muy importante dar dirección de conducta y que sea la, esa información clara y precisa por parte del maestro de cómo debe usted trabajar con las conductas de los estudiantes. Usted necesita investigar qué es lo que van a trabajar académicamente y con conductas. Tome apuntes, notas, haga preguntas y al final cuando usted vea que el estudiante ha alcanzado esas metas o ha trabajado con los planes individualizados y los objetivos que se han proveído, provee los premios requeridos para que sigan estimulando al estudiante y animar a que sigan en la educación. Es muy importante que usted de esos premios y mantenga una lista variada de premios que afecten o que ayuden más que nada a todos los estudiantes de formas diferentes, ya sea sensoriales, uh, psicológicas, um, físicas. Entonces es importante que usted mantenga una lista y le recomendamos que trabaje con el maestro para que le dé las indicaciones precisas dentro de su plan de aprendizaje de su hijo. Success. Everyone wants their child to be successful. And part of the success is actually planning. But planning requires strategies. There are learning strategies. We have five physical senses. Hear, see, smell, taste, and touch. 
this session today is geared more towards the kindergarten through sixth graders. But I want you to take it back a little bit to your child when they were babies. You notice how they were inquisitive and they used what they could hear, see, smell, taste, and touch to experience the world around them. As a parent, you were their first teacher. It's important to understand what your child's learning styles are. Learning styles are basically those learning modalities, those avenues by which they actually can ascertain new information quickly and easily. There are basically a few lists out there that mention learning strategies or learning styles, I should say. Uh, some list four, some list seven, some list eight. I'm gonna share with you seven of today. Auditorial learner, there's the visual learner, there's the tactile learner, there's the global learner, the analytic learner, the social learner, and the solitary learner. Let me explain to you a little bit about those. The aureal learner, uh, the auditorial learner, these individuals learn best by hearing. They love sounds, they love music. Some of them learn their ABCs by singing a song. Maybe they learn their uh, multiplication by singing a song. Um, visual learners are those learners that have to see things. I know myself as a auditory learner, I had to really work hard on making sure as a facilitator instructor that I provide the different avenues of learning for all the students so students can ascertain information. Your child, you can easily observe your child and find out what their learning style is by just observing them. Are they an aureal learner? Or are they a visual learner? Or maybe they are a tactile learner, also known as kinesthetic, where they have to touch things. They can't seem to learn it unless they touch it. Um, getting back to the alphabets, sometimes just handling the wooden block letters, uh, children were able to learn the alphabet. Or maybe they drew the letters in sand. Those are your tactile learners. We also have our global learners. The global learners are basically those that pick up things spontaneously. Sometimes even before you can ex ex finish explaining what was going on, they've already perceived and have questions that they're trying to articulate. Those global learners are basically ascertaining the world around them with everything that comes into their realm of perspective. They can see things, hear things, understand things quicker than some other students may not. The analytical learners. Uh, these individuals are good at math, they're good at logic, they just have a way of figuring things out, puzzles, um, they just have a way of understanding complexities. Complexities to them are simple. Which child is yours? What are the two key learning styles that they have? There's also the social learner. And this is one area some children are having a difficult time right now. The social learner has to talk with their peers. They need that interaction, need the conversation with the peers and the, the teachers and the other paraprofessionals that work in the environment. Without that, they just feel totally disconnected. They need that communication. So sometimes you can set things up for the child so that they can communicate with their peers on the phone and talk with them about the lesson, talk with their own siblings about the lesson, talk with you about the lesson as they review what they've covered or will cover. Then there are those solitary learners. These individuals work alone. I was an assistant principal at a high school and I had a young man that they brought to me on several occasions. He had problems in the classroom. Well, come to find out that his problems in the classroom was just that, he was in the classroom. After speaking with his parents and speaking with him, we realized that a different environment for him was actually working through options for youth. I'm not promoting options for use, but I just want to share this student was able to work autonomously on his own with the assignments, and he actually graduated a year earlier from high school than it had been planned for him, simply because he was a solo learner. He wanted to work alone at all times. There are learning strategies that we also need to make sure that our children uh, have access to. One of the ones that we know really works is repetition. It's saying something over and over several times. In the general environment, uh, students will hear something three times, they generally get it. When they get into the special education environment, 
three times at the beginning, you probably have to say it five or six times before they ascertain it. Uh, repetition is very powerful. My colleague, Dr. Nauman, mentioned something earlier, and that was EATS. Well, EATS is a mnemonic, okay? Mnemonics basically take the first letter of words and actually help people remember things. For instance, the Great Lakes. You may not know what the Great Lakes are, but I'm gonna teach you the Great Lakes in less than one minute, the Great Lakes. I'm gonna use the Great Lakes and teach you the Great Lakes by using the mnemonic homes. The Great Lakes. H is for Huron, O is for Ontario, like the city down the hill, M is for Michigan, E is for Erie, the S is for Superior. The Great Lakes are homes, H-O-M-E-S. H is for Huron, O is for Ontario, M is for Michigan, E is for Erie, S is for Superior. Now you know the Great Lakes in less than one minute. Mnemonics is a very powerful tool not only for students with special needs, but for all students. And there's several neomics out there. If you play the instrument, you heard about every good bar, that's fine. There's several neomics out there that we have used. Uh, another uh, learning strategy is chunking, particularly with the younger children. You cannot teach them in 50 minute spans. You cannot teach them in 45 minute spans. You want to concentrate their teaching and give it to them a little bit at a time. 10 minute blocks, 15 minute blocks. Then you have a little break or recession doing something else. Then go back to chunk the material again for 15 blocks. Some people eat like that. Rather than eating a full course meal, they would actually break that meal up into three different segments and eat a little bit every two or three hours. It works best for them, probably in their digestion or whatever reason they do it, but that's what we need to do with our children, the, particularly the younger ones. We need to break the information up for them so they can understand it. Chunking. Okay, gracias. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Michael, would you go back to the former? Thank you. And we missed the one in the Spanish. Bueno, no importa. Um, las estrategias de aprendizaje en esta sección, eh, les voy a hablar rápidamente un sumario de lo que los profesores han hablado. Dice que para un estudiante tenga éxito, hay que uh, formal, formalizar un plan, hay que formular un plan. Y dentro de este plan tenemos que pensar que tenemos cinco sentidos, el uh, vista, el oído, el olfato, el uh, boca y nuestras manos. Nuestros niños en edades preescolar hasta el 6 grados dependen mucho de nuestros sentidos para comprender y hacer sentido de lo que los rodea y para experimentar el mundo. Ellos recomiendan que los diferentes estilos de aprendizaje de cada niño usted esté eh, famili familiarizado cómo es que se desenvuelve mejor dentro de este ámbito de aprendizaje. Hay, varios, hay varias formas de aprendizaje. Algunos niños prefieren eh, ver las cosas, fotografías, ayudas visuales, en las cuales ellos pueden comprender y procesar la información. La otra son usando la audición. Muchos estudiantes aprenden por medio de canciones, de la rima, eh, de la conversación y ellos eh, capturan la información de forma más rápida en forma auditiva. La siguiente sería la utilizar el tacto. Unos niños que son eh, de aprendizaje por medio del tacto requieren de manipulativos, necesitan sentir que el material, si van a escribir letras, ellos pueden por medio de arena, trazar letras o papel eh, que ellos eh, sientan rasposo o suave para que ellos puedan procesar esa información que usted le está dando. Hay otros niños que les llaman niños de aprendizaje, capturan globalmente lo que les está diciendo y están de hecho adelantándose a lo que usted lleva a decir. Ellos capturan mucho más rápido el aprendizaje y proveen eh, preguntas que nos hacen antes de que nosotros terminemos. Uh, Muchos de estos niños también son solitarios, prefieren estar solos para hacer el trabajo y son exitosos si se les deja hacer las cosas por sí mismas. 
pero hay otros, la mayoría de los niños son sociales y aprenden por medio de la interacción con sus compañeros. Y durante este momento de la pandemia ha sido el más difícil para todos nosotros, ya que somos por naturaleza personas sociales y requerimos de la interacción con otros niños o con otras personas. Es muy importante también que dentro de estas diferentes uh, formas de aprendizaje entendamos qué es lo que en nuestro estudiante eh, requiere y cómo ayudarle a aprender sabiendo cuál es la modalidad de su aprendizaje. La última que es la estrategias, tipo de estrategias, voy a mencionar unas uh, dos, tres que el profesor Richardson nos proveyó. Una es la repetición. Es muy importante que el estudiante tenga repetición de temas, conceptos o ideas de tres a seis veces. Un niño fuera de la clase de aprendizaje especial puede quizás mantener el concepto hasta después de la tercera vez. El estudiante en educación especial requiere de cinco a seis veces repet más repeticiones que eh, los demás. Procesa de diferente forma y la repetición ayuda a reforzar todo el material. También hay otra forma que se le llama fragmentado, no de el material todo de golpe, por decirlo así. Trate de dividirlo en porciones pequeñas donde el estudiante pueda entender una parte y después moverse a la que sigue y a la que sigue. Es muy importante que aprendamos a dividir el contenido o el material de las tareas en porciones pequeñas para que ellos puedan manejarla. Y la última, trate de usar juegos de mnemónica. Quiere decir que utilice letras y números, canciones, algo que ellos puedan combinar para que se recuerden nombres o fechas o datos importantes. Eh, la práctica de la mnemónica con letras puede ayudar a un estudiante a aprender conceptos, por ejemplo, nombres de lagos, eh, los estados, y usted puede formar un, un juego de palabras para que ellos puedan aprender y memorizarse el contenido de esta forma. Ahora sí, la que sigue. I also like to suggest some uh, practical and effective learning strategies you can use home environment. Uh, first then, first then is a learning and reward system. It is called a uh, grandma a principle. A first word, then grandma cook for you like that. First 10 minutes work on the brain pop program on the computer, then 10 minutes, 10 minutes uh, play time like that. Okay, and choice making. Choice making uh, providing a uh, lot of opportunities uh, for child to become uh, independent. Uh, also, you know, child, uh, uh, you know, good at uh, self-determination and engagement and motivation to learn. Okay. So uh, uh, there are many choices at home, uh, where to work, uh, where to go for a walk, and where to go to eat, uh, when to play, and when to bike, when, when to uh, swim like that, and with whom uh, to do with an activity. There are many, you know, uh, choices we can create. You can create a uh, home environment. Okay, next one is priming. Priming uh, reduces uh, the level of anxiety and fear for new activities, okay, and new uh, person, and new visits and new materials, etc. okay? It is an exercise. If a child is going to uh, visit a dentist office tomorrow, have a role play with a child, okay? So you become a dentist and child become a patient and switching role, etc. okay? And uh, when a teacher wants to uh, introduce a new computer program, then a priming activity uh, with mom first. It is a good idea 
okay? If the child is going to visit a park tomorrow, you know, and field work, uh, then, you know, watch a video about uh, that place. And that is a priming activity, right? So, you know, maybe uh, you renovate our house, you know, for, before we paint, we priming, right? So uh, painting, you know, can be last in a longer time. Okay, so prime, with the priming, we reduce anxiety and then, you know, child accept in the new activities uh, better. Uh, then without uh, priming, okay? And uh, high PR request. There are some requests that a child willing to follow, we call it high P, all right? High probability, okay? So high probability uh, requests our child is uh, uh, willing to follow. Low pri uh, probability requests our uh, child is not willing to follow. As you ask a child to do a new, uh, you know, task, which is a low uh, probability, all right? Then uh, you need to introduce, you know, high P first. So sequence is like that, you know, easy, easy, and difficult task. Easy, easy, difficult task. So, you know, another name for this strategy is a. Uh, uh, building momentum, all right? So you have to build the momentum in order to introduce a new activity. It works, it really works, okay? So it's a very effective uh, uh, strategy you can use at home, all right? And uh, yeah, that's what I could cover, you know, for today's yeah, presentation. Uh Michael, I can see you. Michael, one more. Um, oh, no. Um, go back to the one in the, the Dr. Nawaz, yeah, and I will just do that in Spanish. Uh, in this Estrategias de Aprendizaje, eh, Dr. Nawaz nos uh, provee sugerencias de cómo establecer nuevas estrategias, cómo introducir nuevas estrategias o nuevo material con los estudiantes. La primera es primero, después. Esta uh, estrategia le ayuda al estudiante a que usted determine qué es lo que va a hacer primero un estudiante y después qué es lo que va a hacer después. Ayuda con tiempo. Entonces tenemos que decirle al estudiante que por primera vez va a trabajar por 10 minutos y cuando termine esa actividad o el tiempo que usted vaya a poner, va a ser la otra actividad por siguientes minutos. Eh, la ayuda visual como tienen en la uh, fotografía donde tiene trabajo y la computadora, el estudiante va a formar dentro de su mente qué es, lo, es la secuencia de trabajo que va a realizar primero y después. La segunda estrategia es hacer, uh, preparar o tomar decisiones. Al tomar de decisiones, el estudiante también puede tomar eh, el, el, su propio aprendizaje para decir qué es lo que quiere hacer primero y qué es lo que va a hacer después. Después sigue el priming en español, es preparación. En preparación ayuda a que el estudiante se vuelva más independiente, él da motivación, ayuda con la colaboración y con el manejo de tiempo. Con la preparación es muy importante que hagamos de antemano este trabajo para introducir actividades que son nuevas, tareas que son nuevas. Y es muy importante que usemos, en este caso, uh, videos para que reduzcan eh, la ansiedad o el estrés en el, el estudiante. Eh, acepta la actividad del estudiante una vez que se le viste de antemano lo que va a hacer y él piensa o ella piensa cómo va a seguir y formar en su día. Uh, es una forma en la cual la actividad se acepta de mejor manera sin ningún problema de conducta porque el estudiante ya sabe lo que va a hacer. Es, por ejemplo, si dentro de unos días el estudiante va a ir al dentista o va a ir al doctor, Ayudar a que el estudiante y el padre o el familiar 
tomen el papel de, de dentista y paciente y jueguen a que van a ir al, doc, al doctor y que van a ir al dentista, ya sea que uno tome el papel de dentista o el de paciente y después voltear los papeles para que también pueda eh, ejercer ese papel o ese rol dentro de esa actividad. De esa forma el estudiante entiende que va a ir al doctor Reduce la ansiedad y el miedo para ir a la actividad. Cualquier actividad nueva que se vaya a introducir, se les recomienda que hagan esta preparación de antemano por medio del juego de la actuación. Por último, los pedidos de alta probabilidad. Esta estrategia es muy importante porque ayuda al estudiante a realizar tareas que van de fácil, fácil y después incrementan la uh, dificultad. Trabajar con los estudiantes de esa forma es importante, hacer que hagan cosas primero fáciles y fáciles y después aumentar el nivel académico o el rigor para que no se desesperen y también vayan teniendo éxito dentro de lo que están haciendo durante la clase o la sesión que usted está teniendo con ellos dentro del aprendizaje. I want to speak with you briefly about video modeling. Video modeling. Basically what video modeling is, is allowing the child or the individual to see the demonstration of something that they're getting ready to do. By watching someone model for them the activities, it's a lot easier for them to ascertain what they need to do. Video modeling is a very powerful tool. Just recently, I was on YouTube, for instance, and I saw a story about a young man that was three years old, and he saw every Bruce Lee movie that had come out. And he had Bruce Lee's movements down, three years old, with nimchucks and everything else, by just watching Bruce Lee's movie. He had it down to science where he not only did the moves, but he actually had the timing together. Video modeling is very important. When children can see others do what they are attempting to do, also when they are able to be video themselves and to see themselves doing it, then they can see where they run short. Video modeling is very important. I want to talk a little bit about the display equipment. Uh, everyone is unfortunate enough to have a computer with a large monitor and so forth, but you have to use what you have and being able to successfully navigate through that media device is important. Smartphones don't display all the things that you would see on a computer monitor. And so you, a person has to help their child navigate by scrolling to the left or scrolling up, uh, scrolling to the right in order to see what they need to see and then be able to find the right icon to click on to open the screen up or maybe even just turn in the screen, the video device sideways so they can get a landscape view rather than a portrait view. It's so important to make sure that you have an up-to-date computer that is virus-free. There are several viruses out there, virus protectors, that are actually free. Find something to protect your child's system so that they don't get infiltrated with viruses that could damage their productivity down the road. Monitors. If by chance, for instance, a child has a tablet they're working from and the screen is somewhat small, that many times can be used with a Bluetooth device to project it over to a larger screen. It might be your smart TV in the home, or it might be a monitor that you were able to pick up from the neighbor who bought themselves a new computer and no longer needs that monitor. And there are also many secondhand stores that you can get monitors basically for $5 that would help enlarge the screen for your child so they can see things clearly. As far as video modeling resources, um, there are several. There are multiple apps. Go to the app store on your phone and download those apps about video modeling. And most importantly, don't forget about the resources that are available on YouTube. YouTube has a wealth of information on there where people actually demonstrate how you do various things from fixing equipment to learning different uh, disciplines in academia, a number of different things. YouTube is phenomenal with um, different things out there. So your child can be exposed to video modeling that would help them academically. And there's also Zoom. 
They can record themselves in Zoom and see how they're actually doing their presentation that they're going to give to someone else or record their uh, responses and see how they actually look when they respond to their peers in the classroom. Zoom, the phone, both can record and help the child in video modeling. Thank you. En esta sección, el video modelaje es otra de las estrategias que se recomiendan para nuestros estudiantes en uh, clases de es especiales. El video modelaje, eh, la grabación de video, es algo muy importante. El, es una herramienta muy poderosa para el aprendizaje y podemos verlo por medio de YouTube. Hay varios videos que nos ayudan a aprender cosas que no sabemos. En el caso de, por ejemplo, un niño que aprendió, de, teniendo tres años, aprendió todos los movimientos de Bruce Lee y el tiempo que él estaba haciendo todos estos movimientos. Eh, es muy importante que los estudiantes puedan obtener acceso a videos donde ellos puedan aprender sin ningún problema. Lo que ven y lo que ellos puedan uh, hacer eh, al grabarse es, es también muy importante. Por ejemplo, cuando ellos utilizan la grabación para grabarse a sí mismos, desempeñándose o haciendo alguna tarea, al ver después esta videograbación, ellos van a darse cuenta las áreas en las que se encuentran bien y qué áreas son las que les hace falta mejorar. También es muy importante que cuidemos el equipo de las pantallas y los monitores. Si utilizamos pantallas pequeñas, a veces es muy difícil con nuestros teléfonos tener acceso a los um, en, enlaces que requieren que el estudiante uh, accese a una página. Es recomendable que se busque una pantalla que tenga la capacidad de conectarse a su aparato que sea un poco mayor para que el estudiante pueda ver de forma más grande el material. Uh, también se le recomienda que busque antivirus para sus uh, computadoras para que de esa forma no se eh, vayan a dañar y también para que usted monitoree los videos que sus hijos puedan ver dentro de YouTube. La última parte es eh, los recursos del video modelaje. Hay muchas aplicaciones para esta uh, estrategia donde en YouTube, por ejemplo, los estudiantes pueden aprender uh, contenido académico, cómo arreglar uh, un carro, cómo preparar algo en la cocina. Es, es uh, muy, val muy valioso eh, tener acceso a estos videos y que son gratis de, de, de libre acceso para ustedes. Eh, también es muy importante que ellos utilicen o aprendan, por ejemplo, utilizar el Zoom para que graben su contenido, su, su material, sus presentaciones y después ellos puedan enseñarlos a sus profesores y también ver lo que están haciendo. Yo creo que eso motiva a los estudiantes a dar, y a los, también a darse cuenta de qué es lo que necesitan mejorar y en qué las están haciendo muy bien. I'm aware of a time limit. Um, you know, with that, uh, I like to give you a piece of uh, statistics. 60% uh, to 80% of uh, 80 devices adopted uh, for children with disabilities are going to be abandoned in a couple of years, right? So there are trials and errors, a lot of trials and errors. So we need, uh, you know, a systematic uh, evaluation system. So SETT is an evaluation system. It is very effective and easy to conduct and easy to understand. So uh, like I listed here, S stand for students, E, for the environment, T, tasks, and T, uh, for tools, okay? So we need to uh, find out information about them in order to identify uh, proper uh, assistive technology. 
uh, for uh, for your child. Okay, uh, if you include uh, suggestion and recommendation for a proper assistive technology uh, in uh, your child IEP, there are a high chance you will get uh, you know devices or program uh, uh, AT devices. Okay. Uh, with that, you know, Dr. Romano. Gracias. Um, con la tecnología de aprendizaje, eh, hay una estadística, por ejemplo, que de, dentro de unos años, el 60 o el 80 por ciento de los aparatos que estamos usando hoy en día ya no van a, van a estar eh, al corriente. Entonces, es muy importante que tengamos un sistema de evaluación en el cual a nos ayude a mantener eh, la conexión de tecnología y el aprendizaje juntos para nuestros estudiantes. Usando las letras SETT -T, en inglés, estudiante, ambiente, tareas y herramientas, el profesor Nam nos provee una idea de qué es lo que nosotros necesitamos qué tipo de herramientas necesitamos, cuáles son las destrezas y habilidades que nuestros estudiantes poseen en este momento y qué son los que vamos a necesitar en el futuro. Al mismo tiempo, si en su IEP el estudiante requiere de tecnología de aprendizaje, es muy probable que el, eh, los la escuela pueda proveer esta tecnología para usted y se recomienda que utilice eh, el IP y que busque las herramientas que son necesarias para su estudiante, el ambiente, para que eh, pueda desempeñarse de la mejor manera y utilizando tecnología de aprendizaje. I'm going to mention a couple more things about assistive technology. I'm not going to go through the complete list. We've already heard about schedules and pictures, but I want to tell you about weighted pencils. Um, sometimes children have a difficult time holding their writing instruments, but parents can actually put uh, nuts, bolts onto a pencil to help your child have the weight of the pencil to assist them. I have here put together a, an example of a writing instrument that's a pencil. And basically what I did was I put four pencils together by a rubber band and made them a fat pencil for a child. Um, that's one thing that will help young children navigate uh, in their writing instruments, um, be successful. A couple of resources that I want to mention to you, um, they are available online at Google Advanced Search. You can put in low tech and they will tell you the different type of uh, resources that are available that are low tech. Same thing with high tech, Google Advanced Search, not Google Search, but Google Advanced Search gives you the option where you can actually designate what you want to look for with a number of different delimiters. YouTube, also the same thing. You want to conduct, uh, look at those resources. Dr. Romano, if you would, please. Gracias. Uh, para terminar con la tecnología de asistencia y esta estrategia, bueno, uh, muchos de nuestros estudiantes mm, requieren de otro tipo de asistencia o de instrumentos, en este caso instrumentos de escritura. Aparte de los horarios visuales con dibujos, aparte de la tecnología que ya se ha mencionado, nuestros lápices eh, necesitan aprender a utilizar el lápiz, a cómo agarrar propiamente el lápiz. Y en esto hacemos hincapié, hay lápices con pesos calibrados en el cual provee ayuda al estudiante para mantener estable eh, la escritura para que no se mueva. También hacer lápices gordos. En esta eh, demostración, doctor Cre nos enseñó cuatro lápices, todos juntos amarrados con una liga y uno para cual eh, pueda ser el que escriba, pero ayuda para poder agarrar y tener esa eh, eh, formación de, de los dedos para poder escribir. Uh, si no tenemos otro tipo de tecnología, recurrimos al papel grande, cartulinas, pósters, papel donde el estudiante pueda utilizar de forma grande para expresar los conocimientos o desarrollar sus tareas. Lentes, 
tenemos que asegurarnos que nuestros niños si necesitan lentes, esa es otra forma de tecnología, les podemos ayudar. Y bueno, ya hemos hablado sobre tecnología de alto nivel, como son las computadoras o los monitores y teclados especiales o grandes dispositivos de comunicación, como la transcripción o los uh, aparatos auditivos con traductores para que nuestros estudiantes puedan enseñar. La recomendación es que hagan una búsqueda en Google para poder identificar qué tipo de material necesitan o qué es lo que usted está buscando. Haga una búsqueda en Google Search en, y puede eh, localizar ya sea videos o ideas en cómo utilizar otro tipo de eh, herramientas para el aprendizaje de nuestros niños. Thank you so much. Um, I want to let everyone know that we really appreciate you being with us on today, but we need a little break right now. I'm going to give you some space so that you can um, stand up and stretch and get a cup of coffee or some water, or basically just let your mind rest for a little bit. So we're going to take a five minute break. So come back and be with us at 1136. Um, thank you so much. Gracias. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. We're getting ready to move on in our webinar today. And I'm excited that to have uh, uh, Tracy Madrano and Bill Copling. They're going to share with us some technology insights that would help you as parents and actually will help all of us. So at this time, um, Tracy Madrano and Bill Copling. Thank you, Dr. Richardson, and welcome everybody. Welcome back, thank you for joining us. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the digital technology segment for today's event. I think Dr. Romano, you're muted. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> no <Thank podía>. <laughs> Gracias. Oh. Disculpen. Eh, la sesión que vamos a ver ahorita es sobre equipar a los padres de estudiantes en grados primarios, preprimarios, hasta el, la preparatoria y cómo apoyarlos en este tiempo de educación a distancia. So just really quickly, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Tracy Medrano. I'm an instructional designer at California State University, San Bernardino. I've been designing online courses in both the corporate um, environment, County Riverside, as well as higher education for about 13 years. Um, I'm also a full-time working parent and have two young children in the current virtual learning environment. So it has been quite of a challenge. So I share um, you know, some of those struggles along with you as parents as well. Joining me today is a friend and a colleague who's going to go ahead and introduce himself and get us started. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Good morning. My name is Bill Klopping, and I'm the director of technology for Victor Elementary School District in Victorville. Uh, I oversee tech, the technology department, and it's my responsibility to ensure that the, my district is providing the technology and support to our students and families. Uh, I have two teenage teenagers in high school, and my wife is a sixth grade science teacher. Um, so you can say I'm surrounded by distance learning. Bien. Eh, la presentadora Tracy Medrano y ella es una diseñadora de instrucción en la, nuestra universidad. También ella ha diseñado cursos en línea por los últimos 13 años. Al mismo tiempo, es una madre de tiempo completo y tiene dos niños en edad de, eh, escolar que les está ayudando en este aprendizaje virtual. Ella les recomienda que como amiga y compañera les va a ayudar a navegar esta sesión con su compañero Bill. Y Bill es uh, parte de la escuela, el, el distrito escolar, también es un padre y también está dentro del de área uh, como padre y como educador. Así que bienvenidos. 
All right, so we've broken our presentation into three parts. Uh, we'll start with an overview of being a parent of virtual learners in our current distance learning environment. Uh, we'll then transition into some of the technologies that we are using and seeing in this new learning environment. And we'll wrap up with discussing a few of the uh, technical issues and some ways to work through and around them. En resumen, bueno, eh, vamos a ver tres uh, secciones, o esta uh, sección está dividida en tres partes. Una es los padres, estudiantes virtuales, la tecnología y cómo vamos a solucionar los desafíos técnicos. Uh, let's, see. let's start with talking about some of the challenges Tracy and I ex have experienced during the last six months as parents in this distance learning environment. Vamos a hablar sobre los retos que hemos experimentado, tanto Tracy como yo, en este um, ambiente virtual. These bulleted items come from our personal experiences. Although not completely tech related, there, they are distractions that happen which we need to consider with distance learning. Discussing these distractions with your student is the first step in promoting a positive learning environment. Make sure that you're checking in and keeping the communication open with your student's teacher. So really, um, you know, like Bill and I shared, we have our children of our own. This is actually a picture that you see here on screen of his own child texting while um, doing some schoolwork. And there's a picture there of a child watching Peppa Pig, which is something that, you know, I've caught my child doing um, during distance learning. So. We have a lot of home distractions. Um, we really, as parents, are serving as coaches to help our children and guide them through the many challenges of virtual learning, as well as the challenges that we're trying to navigate ourselves as well. So the big idea here is our children, regardless of age, are essentially distracted by many of the distractions within the home environment. Along with that, we also have some technology challenges. While technology can be a huge benefit, it also presents some challenges, especially new technology to us. So we're going to hopefully give you some good and helpful tips that will make the learning experience much better. So, los desafíos del aprendizaje en casa, uh, Bill y Tracy han encontrado a sus hijos jugando en la computadora, usando textos o viendo películas cuando deberían de estar haciendo tarea. Ellos entienden que es muy retante el mantener un ambiente donde se encuentre todo callado o en silencio o donde estén al 100% atendiendo a las clases. Ellos eh, les recomiendan que tengamos cuidado de observar a nuestros hijos y mantenernos al tanto para que no estén enviando mensajes en texto durante la clase, que no apaguen las cámaras, que no se paren porque tienen que irse o uh, salirse con excusas de que van al baño, eh, tratar de que haya a participación y mantener eh, en contacto con el maestro para saber que, cuáles son las tareas. Muchos de los estudiantes van a, a a decir que no tienen tarea cuando en realidad se tienen. Entonces ellos van a tratar de ayudarles a navegar durante este periodo en esta sesión. So just a few tips here. You want to stay connected with your teacher. Um, why wait for a parent-teacher parent conference? Um, connect with your child's teacher, whether it's by text, email, call, or a video meeting. Um, I found with my children that if I ask my children to let their teacher know at the end of class um, if I can speak with them. They're happy and more than willing to spend a few minutes with me just so that I can check in. How are my kids doing? Are they getting their assignments turned in? Do you see any problems? Um, and you know, how's the lesson going? So um, you wanna be able to do that. Also be involved with your child's education. Ask your child questions, understand the assignments, understanding the homework, the goals. Um, and check your, your guardian accounts weekly. So, for example, my um, children have Aries. There are a lot of other guardian accounts out there, but you want to make sure that you stay on top of reviewing their grades, any uh, parent-teacher communication, as well as their progress within the course. So this is especially important because you can definitely help with some early intervention there. So if you see that assignments are missing, 
um, communications coming from uh, your teacher that things have been returned and things need to be adjusted and resubmitted, you can do that. So, nuestras sugerencias para los padres es muy importante que usted se mantenga conectado con el maestro de sus hijos. Eh, ya sea por medio del texto, correos electrónicos o el uso de las plataformas dentro del salón de clase que son para comunicarse con nuestros padres. Al final del día es muy importante que usted tenga la oportunidad de hablar con el maestro. Dígale a, a su hijo que usted quiere checar con el maestro al final del día para revisar cómo fue el día de hoy, si se han entregado las tareas, si hay algún problema, eh, si se está involucrado o no dentro de la lección, cuáles son los objetivos de la clase, de la lección del día, eh, checar también qué eh, mensajes se han mandado y ustedes a lo mejor no están conscientes o no saben de qué se han recibido. Es por eso importante que se mantenga involucrado en la educación de su hijo por medio de las tecnologías que nos han presentado. Una forma es verificando los sistemas de información con frecuencia. Por ejemplo, en Tracy o en Bio, tienen diferentes plataformas para padres en las cuales ustedes pueden recibir mensajes de, las, de la escuela para saber qué es lo que está pasando. Tratar de mantenerse al tanto una vez mínimo por semana para que pueda estar, eh, a, para que sepa qué es lo que hay que hacer durante la semana y cuáles son las noticias que los maestros han entregado. Thank you. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the technology. Vamos a hablar ahora sobre la tecnología. So let's begin by understanding a learning management system. A learning management system um, are platforms used to deliver the content. So just like you would in a traditional classroom, walk into the classroom and you have your chalkboard, your whiteboard, um, your books, your desk. This is the virtual classroom for your students. It houses all of the content, class reminders. This is where they connect with their teacher and their classmates. On the teacher's end, they can track your students' learning progress. Um, they could determine any skill gaps um, and also obtain reporting in terms of how long your child is working in a particular lesson. Um, but this is definitely where your child is spending the majority of their time is within the learning management system, which is their online classroom. Dentro del sistema de gestión de aprendizaje, estas plataformas de sistema de gestión de aprendizaje en inglés se llama Learning Management Systems o LMS por sus siglas en inglés. Estas son utilizadas para entregar el contenido y realizar un seguimiento del proceso de aprendizaje o del progreso del aprendizaje. En estos um, sistemas podemos ver cuáles son las tareas. Podemos aprender cómo se está manejando el salón de clase, cómo están comunicándose los estudiantes con otros compañeros o con sus profesores. Es importante también mantener una rutina establecida, como habíamos mencionado antes, sobre tareas que son necesarias hacerse o que tengan de hacerse al día y cuándo van a ser las que vienen en el futuro. So there's a wide range of learning management systems. For example, your child's school may be using Moodle, Canvas, Google Classroom, um, Blackboard, or some other platform. There are a lot of platforms out there, but very quickly what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some, um, just briefly, some navigational features of Google Classroom and Canvas, which are um, probably about the most commonly used within our local school districts here. Bueno, también vamos a hablar sobre las sugerencias de las uh, clases o de más bien de la tecnología virtual que se va a utilizar, como por ejemplo puede ser Canvas o Google Classroom, los errores de Google virtuales. También hay Moodle, Muro o otras tecnologías y uh, en este momento vamos a ver qué es lo que podemos hacer con estas herramientas dentro de nuestra casa. So here you have Google Classroom. Um, to the right of the screen, you'll see a navigation bar. And this is what you find um, when you go into the Google Classroom. So the navigation is going to be along the top, as you see here. Stream is that first tab that you see is where your child will access their live class meeting using the link or the video icon. So this is where they will go to join their teacher and their classmates in a live virtual meet. Um, also in the section, your child will see 
class updates, reminders, and some general class chat that might be posted. Entonces, si estamos dentro del salón de uh, Google, en el salón de clases de Google, uh, el estudiante puede uh, tener acceso, o usted también puede ver que tenga el acceso a la, a lo que le llaman la parte de stream. Si usted ve la barra superior, dice stream. Ese es el que le da acceso al salón de clase. Uh, también hay un, uh, uh, una conexión donde usted se conecta acá a la cámara para que esté la clase en vivo y de ahí puede ver todas las actualizaciones de clases, los recordatorios, el chat y con quién se conecta el estudiante durante el día. So next you have the navigate on the navigation bar is classwork. This is where your child's going to spend um, probably most of their time. Here they can access all their coursework and turn in their, their work to their teacher. If you also notice, there's a gray and blue bubble or icon to the left of the listed assignments on screen. The gray icon will indicate to you and your child that um, they've completed the work and they've actually submitted it. The blue icon will indicate that attention is needed. So in other words, the assignment has not been turned in. Um, so if we were to click on the item with the blue icon, the one that has not been turned in, we would see the details for that particular assignment, as well as a blue button to turn in the assignment. Dentro de las sugerencias para uh, ver si el estudiante ha entregado todas las tareas, Vemos eh, de la parte izquierda donde dice Wednesday, miércoles, hay tres círculos, uno gris, dos son gris y uno azul. Estos indican los trabajos que se han requerido para el estudiante o que son necesarios. El color azul significa que el estudiante no ha entregado la tarea. Usted puede checar y ver qué es lo que hace falta. Una vez que ese eh, tarea es terminada y la entrega va a ser calificada y puede cambiar a color eh, ya no ser azul. De esa forma usted tiene al tanto eh, que el estudiante no ha perdido tareas y las ha entregado. So just really quickly here, um, this is what it looks like if you were to click on the blue icon to the left is where you'll see all the assignment um, instructions and details to the right under your work. That is where you'll find any attachments if something has been attached um, for your student to complete. They'll open it and they'll complete the assignment just by closing it because it is connected to the Google Drive. Um, often, um, some students think that when they complete the document and they close it, it will automatically submit to the teacher. But in fact, your student will need to click on that blue button there, which is um, indicates it's being turned in. So it'll then submit the assignment to the teacher. Um, and then it'll also turn the blue icon to gray. So it's a visual indicator that the assignment has truly been completed. También uh, esto sería una vista más cercana de, de la, el, la tarea que habíamos visto. Que aquí les entrega detalles de lo que deben de hacer. Si hay material extra que se ha agregado, lo pueden ver. Es muy importante también que los estudiantes aprendan a cómo manejar esta herramienta. Porque en la barra azul larga donde dice Save, que es para guardar el material, es importante que el estudiante toque esa barra y la presione para que el trabajo se guarde y se entregue. And just really quickly, this section here has been a lifesaver for me. So still within the classwork tab, um, to the far left, you see view your work. Under here, you have um, assigned and returned. I've created a habit um, for myself and for my children with which has been extremely helpful. So every time they log in or I log into their Google Classroom, this is the first place I check. You want to check what assignments are still there that need to be completed and then return. That's a big one because your uh, child's teacher can return work to them um, either with full points. So you can see that here that they've received perhaps 100 out of 100, in which case you don't need to do anything with that. But if you see a score of maybe zero out of 100, and it's in this return bucket, 
um, then you want to open that file uh, with your child and help them complete the award because uh, some adjustment is needed and then they can resubmit. Entonces, en esta es la, la forma en la cual los estudiantes pueden ver esta sección y aquí el estudiante puede darse cuenta de qué es lo que ha entregado, puede ver la tarea, qué es lo que le hace falta y también puede escoger qué es lo que puede mirar. Particularmente esta sección es uh, de gran ayuda porque para nuestros hijos, eh, en Tracy ha encontrado que esto le ayuda a establecer un hábito de checar cuáles son las tareas que ya metió y las que aún le siguen. Eh, puede ver que traba, el trabajo por completo y también puede ver qué tareas ya se regresaron. Si en caso que algo esté fallando o no esté completa, ella puede volver a, a bajar el documento y terminarlo. También eh, puede volverlo a resumir para que pueda tener la, a, la calificación una vez que haya sido corregido. Esto de ver estos documentos es muy uh, importante para que mantengan al tanto de las tareas que están haciendo. Es importante que usted se mantenga familiarizado de estas funciones de navegación, mantenga una rutina en la cual el estudiante vea cuál es la tarea que necesita terminar y cuál es la tarea que necesita revisión. Y de esa forma va a ayudar a mejorar la experiencia de aprendizaje de su estudiante. And just really quickly, this is Canvas, which is a different type of learning management system. Um, you can see here the navigation is very different. So instead of being along the top, like Google Classroom, this one is down. Um, you see the, the navigation bar down the um, left-hand side of the screen. So here you would click on course and then find the course from the list and click on that to open the environment. In esta misma, uh... Este es el sistema de Canvas, es otro sistema en el cual en la parte izquierda hay un menú oscuro y ahí puede encontrar la clase. Es un poco diferente de Google Classroom, pero en este también le va a identificar cuáles son las tareas, cuál, qué es lo que debe de hacer, a dónde debe de ir y puede localizar el material o el curso con el nombre y hace presión en ese icono para poder acceder a este material. So here you have the class environment that you're looking at on screen. Um, to the far left is the course navigation um, links. And this is what your child's going to be using to move through the classroom. Um, in the center there, you see the content area. This is where your child will also be spending a good amount of their time. And to the far right is a sidebar where you'll see announcements, reminders, and other types of course information. Um, generally, your child is going to be spending the majority of their time using the left-hand navigation and working um, within the center area, which is the content section. En esta diapositiva, usted puede encontrar eh, cómo es el medio ambiente o el ambiente de la visualización de este nuevo de este sistema en Canva. En la parte izquierda de su pantalla se encuentra una barra de navegación con varios enlaces. Este es el contenido en la parte del medio y en la parte derecha está otra barra que donde tienen los anuncios, recordatorios o otro tipo de información dentro del salón. Su estudiante va a utilizar la mayor parte del tiempo usando el, la barra de navegación que está a la izquierda y los enlaces para trabajar en las materias del día. Now, just really quickly, now that we've talked about a learning management system um, and took a look at the navigational features of Google Classroom and Canvas, but you know, there's a lot of different um, learning management systems out there. We're going to talk about um, some tips for the tool. So within those systems, the learning management systems, teachers add tools and programs to help facilitate the learning. So here you'll see just on screen just a few of those tools um, that are being used in education, but there are so many more. 
En esta, uh, ya que hablamos de los sistemas de manejo del salón virtual, como el Google Classroom o el Canvas, los maestros utilizan otros sistemas y como herramientas de aprendizaje para facilitar el aprendizaje dentro del salón. Por ejemplo, Kahoot o tienen a Google uh, Slides, uh, Flipper, uh, Edpuzzle, son otros sistemas en los cuales los estudiantes pues, se incorporan dentro de la lección para hacer tareas. Y es muy importante que sepan sobre estos para que vean que también están participando con los estudiantes eh, dentro del salón de clase haciendo esto. So I think that the biggest tip uh, here is just to become familiar with these tools, um, watch tutorials. Also, um, you can Google, there's a lot of information out there on Google on how to use certain features of a particular tool. And also don't be afraid to poke around. Um, you can always undo a lot of the stuff that, that, that you may do there, whether you're annotating um, or you type something or you created a text box. Um, so, the big thing here is just really getting in there and becoming familiar with the tools so that you can help your child. Es muy importante que, util, que usted tenga el valor para utilizar y aprender sobre estas herramientas. Es fácil entrar y utilizarlo dentro del contexto y familiarse con estas herramientas para que vean cómo se manejan. Uh, puede usted tener acceso a las tutorías que se presentan por medio o sea de videos o leyendo las instrucciones. Puede usted eh, buscar en Google cómo hacer diferentes herramientas y no tener miedo a utilizarlas. Familiarícese. Si crea una cuenta o utiliza una herramienta, está bien. Aprenda a utilizarlas para que usted después pueda ayudar a su hijo o a sus hijos. So let's go ahead and talk about virtual meetings. There are different types of platforms, some that you'll see here on screen, um, and there are a lot of other ones out there as well. But we're going to give you some tips that will definitely help make a huge difference by improving the live meeting experience. Estas son otras herramientas para reuniones virtuales o para nuestras juntas. Por ejemplo, ahorita estamos utilizando Zoom. Pero hay otras más que pueden ser utilizadas dentro del salón de clase. So using headphones makes a huge difference to help your child focus on um, the meeting and find a quiet space. Now, cameras during a virtual meeting is basically like a window into your home. So um, this doesn't have to be, be uh, feel so intrusive of your home space. I have my children turn on their cameras. Um, really, unless there's something, you know, a really good reason why not to, I have them have their cameras on um, during class time. Encouraging your child to turn on their camera, I feel, is definitely a win-win. Your child will be more likely to actively participate and remain engaged. Teachers build a better connection with their students and can gauge participation. And parents know that their children are actually participating in the lesson. There's also, um, having the camera on also helps build a sense of community, which is really important in today's time when our kids are missing out on that social aspect of their development with their peers and have started school without being able to see their friends and their classmates face to face. So next what I'm going to do is share some tips that will help improve the on camera experience for your child and perhaps even make it fun. Entonces, otra vez las sugerencias es que uh, proveer a nuestros estudiantes con unos auriculares, uh, lo que le llaman los headsets, ¿verdad? Hacen una gran diferencia para ayudar a nuestro estudiante a que se enfoque dentro de las juntas uh, o las lecciones virtuales. Es una forma de tener un, un ambiente callado. También se recomienda que utilice las cámaras y las tengan prendidas durante las juntas virtuales. Es una forma de mantener al estudiante eh, incorporado a la lección en el participante dentro de la lección. Puede ver a, a sus amigos y construir esta comunidad que se requiere. Al menos que por alguna razón no se pueda mantener prendida la cámara, eh, se recomienda que le anime y por favor verifique que los estudiantes tengan las cámaras prendidas. De esta forma la maestra también puede ver 
el proceso de aprendizaje de su hijo o de sus hijos. So the first tip here is to position the light in front of you or in front of your child so that they are well lit. Y también es muy importante que por favor mantengamos un ambiente donde haya suficiente luz. La posición de la luz es importante para que podamos ver las caras de los presentadores y de nuestros estudiantes. The second tip here is to avoid bright lights in the background like an open window because this will cause your child to look like a dark silhouette and so they actually would not be able to be seen on camera. También les recomendamos que eviten tener luces que son muy brillantes como parte de la parte trasera de nosotros, ya que puede ser que la mamá se vea la silueta del estudiante en vez de la cara del estudiante. Um, third, you want to place the camera at eye level. And if you have a hard time doing this, you could just get a couple stacks of book re books really easily and just um, place a laptop on there. Um, but just making sure that it's at eye level. Y trate de mantener la cámara al nivel de los ojos. Si es muy difícil de mantenerla, les recomendamos utilizar varios libros, ponerlos abajo de nuestra computadora para levantarla y hacerla a nivel de nuestros ojos. Fourth, um, be aware of your background. This one's really important. So remove any clutter, photos, or anything that may be distracting or potentially inappropriate for classmates and teachers to see. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the camera is a window into your home. So with this, you may consider setting up your space with, um, you know, where you have a blank wall behind you, if you have to hang up a sheet, um, or add a virtual background. También es muy importante que chequemos nuestro alrededor. Um, la parte de trasera de nuestras cortinas o a veces se ven muy uh, sucias o con mucha desorganización y eso hace que el estudiante se distraiga y se ve de una forma no muy profesional. Entonces se recomienda ya sea que se remueva todo lo que haya uh, alrededor de nosotros que distraiga algo que pueda ser inapropiado para otros compañeros o la maestra o maestro dentro del salón de clase. Y de esta forma usted puede considerar utilizar eh, una pantalla trasera en la cual, ya sea por medio de una sábana o una pared en blanco, que sea eh, la parte trasera sin que haya distractores para otros estudiantes. Y puedo utilizar una, uh, una pantalla virtual, como lo hemos hecho muchos de nosotros el día de hoy. So here on screen you see some different virtual backgrounds. Um, so you can add a virtual background, something that looks like a home space. Um, the middle one there is just something fun and col colorful, um, but you also want to remember that, it, that you don't want to make it distracting. Um, the one on the right is something more professional. There are a lot of virtual backgrounds out there um, that exist and you can add those to most platforms. Y también ahorita pueden ver ejemplos de diferentes uh, ambientes uh, atrás de nuestra persona. Y uno parece como si estuviéramos en una clase, el otro es un poco más divertido, con colores y lo hace un poco más informal, pero con buen ambiente. Y la última es algo más profesional eh, para que no se vea nuestro ambiente dentro de nuestras clases o de nuestra casa. And just some really helpful tips, um, close unnecessary programs, especially in a virtual meeting because it can definitely slow things down. Um, check your audio, making sure that your audio sound is good. Um, mute when the teacher is presenting or others are talking. I see this often um, when children are in the virtual uh, live meetings, um, everybody's unmuted. So just making sure that you um, mute yourself and then unmute yourself when you're called on, and if possible, um, have a camera to improve uh, video clarity as well as lighting and speed. 
Eso es muy importante que dentro de nuestros computadores cerre, cerremos todos los programas que no sean necesarios o que estén funcionando al mismo tiempo. Eso reduce la habilidad de nuestra computadora a trabajar efectivamente dentro del salón de clase. También les recomendamos que revise su audio, uh, silenciar los micrófonos cuando el profesor está presentando o cuando otros miembros de la clase estén hablando o compartiendo sus presentaciones. Hay que activar el sonido solamente cuando sea el momento adecuado. Si es posible, invierta eh, con una cámara externa para mejorar la claridad la iluminación y la, y la velocidad de video. Todas estas sugerencias son buenas alternativas para mantener un ambiente de aprendizaje efectivo. These next three slides, I'm just going to zoom through them, but here's an inexpensive solution to lighting issue. This is um, a ring light that you can purchase for $10 on Amazon, and there are other options as well, but this will give you that front lighting that you need. Esta es una sugerencia rápida, eh, una forma que no es muy cara para tener mejor luz uh, para que nos vean. Es este círculo de luz, lo puede encontrar en Amazon y eh, cuesta menos de, no sé, 10 dólares o algo así. Y lo puede poner enfrente de su computadora, como pueden ver en la pantalla, para tener mejor luz. Here's a really good microphone. This one is called the Blue Snowball. It has great sound quality. Um, it's about $50. There's certainly some other cheaper options um, out on Amazon um, or other places as well that you can look for. Um, but this one I've used before. I also use the Blue Yeti version um, and they're really great mics. Otra sugerencia es obtener un buen micrófono. Este es de la marca Blue Snowball. Y tiene un gran sonido y calidad. Um, es un, hay versiones un poco más baratas. Este cuesta como 50 dólares, ¿verdad? Pero este micrófono le puede ayudar a, al sonido que se escuche eh, con claridad. Si ¿Quién necesita más tips? Puede buscarlos en Amazon. Here's a great webcam. This is a Logitech C930 HD. This one has a built-in mic, so then you wouldn't have to buy uh, a separate mic with this. But this provides great video clarity, also sound quality, um, lighting, since it has some adjustments um, and really does just enhance the overall uh, virtual live meeting space for you. También esta es una cámara de web que se llama Logitech, la C930 de alta definición, que tiene incluido el micrófono y le da video excelente, claridad y también ajuste a la luz para el ambiente. So just some um, tips here. Make sure devices are charged each night. Um, this is a big one. I've been working with uh, my child Um, on homework and then it just the device just shuts off so and that's because it's not charged so you want to make sure that each night devices are charged you have the latest updates um, consider headphones um, working in a quiet space and make sure that your child is saving their work as they go um, even for us as working adults um, we find that we're working on something we're not saving as our as we go Um, we lose power, computer crashes, and then we lose our work. So we want to make sure that um, we get them in the habit of saving their work as they go. Es muy importante que nos aseguremos también que nuestros dispositivos sean cargados cada noche. Asegúrese que estos dispositivos tengan las últimas actualizaciones en las aplicaciones que vamos a utilizar. Considere usar los audífonos con un micrófono o que tenga un entorno donde no hay interrupciones. También es muy importante que el estudiante aprenda a guardar su trabajo. A veces estamos trabajando en nuestra computadora, tenemos documentos abiertos y porque no tenemos la suficiente batería o carga para guardar nuestro material, se pierde. Entonces, les recomendamos hacerlo todo esto cada noche, asegurarse que eh, los estudiantes tengan las cargas necesarias en sus baterías. And this next slide here shows you some keyboard shortcuts, which are definitely a huge time saver, uh, time saver. So you can 
Um, show these to your children, your grandchildren, um, but some of the most commonly used shortcuts are here on screen. The big one that has been a huge lifesaver and time saver for both myself and my children is the control F key, which is the um, find and search key. So if your children have digital books and they're looking, looking for a particular word or phrase, they can click, uh, hold down the control button and then click on the F key and a search box will pop up and then they can type in the word or the phrase, hit enter and it'll locate um, all the areas within the digital book um, where the phrase or the word is located. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Bill. Okay. En la última, una de las herramientas que me ha, que ha funcionado mejor es utilizar los cortes o los circuitos o las claves para el teclado en la cual le pueden salvar mucho tiempo. Uno de estos es el control F, las llaves control F. Este le va a dar acceso a material rápidamente. Por ejemplo, si usted tiene un libro electrónico y está buscando una palabra en especial o una frase en especial, utilizando la, el teclado, la llave de Shift, el control más F, le puede llevar a todas las palabras que tiene lo que usted está buscando en esta sección de búsqueda. Y ahora vamos a entregar eh, la presentación a Bill. All right. Thank you, Tracy. So, technology is crucial in distance learning as, as we've learned over the last six months. Uh, tech support can start at home, though. So let's talk about resolving some common technical issues my team sees in my organization. Bueno, vamos a ver ahora qué desafíos técnicos encontramos dentro del día y vamos a hablar en esta parte de esta sección. And we'll start with the login issues. So it's we get a lot of calls for students that are unable to log in uh, to a resource like Google Classroom or Zoom. So some of the suggestions that we provide are verify the username and password you're using. Um, it's a good idea to have a paper with all your students' logins on it. It can follow your student. Um, and this is especially helpful if the learning environment isn't always in the same place. Um, verify that you are trying to access the correct website with the correct information. It seems like at least once a day I'm trying to log into Google with my Microsoft password and catch myself doing it. Um, and then note the error you're getting when you are unable to log in and you can't figure it out. Uh, the more specific you can be with the problem you're experiencing, the easier it is for the tech team to figure out the problem you are having. Pictures and screenshots of the problem you're having are very helpful for the tech support team. Bueno, para los problemas de inicio de sesión y dispositivo, creo que esta es una de las áreas en las que más se ha encontrado problemas. Y si uno se puede conectarse a las herramientas virtuales como el Google Classroom o el Zoom, verifique que el nombre del usuario y la contraseña que estén utilizando sean los correctos. Uh, les recomendamos utilice un, o haga una lista con todos los uh, nombres y contraseñas, eh, nombres de usuario y contraseñas de cada uno de sus hijos y sus estudiantes. Estas contraseñas son um, permanentes hasta que terminen la escuela. Verifique que esté accediendo al sitio también que sea el correcto. Hay veces que uno escribe o está utilizando una cuenta personal para algo que no es eh, con acceso personal. Entonces es muy importante que por favor utilice la, el correo electrónico y el acceso que es de la escuela. Si encuentra errores, por favor contacte a la escuela. Va a facilitar mucho el que usted tome fotografía de la pantalla o del mensaje que le esté, les esté dando el acceso. Y entonces los técnicos pueden ayudarle a resolver este problema. All right, let's talk about a quick tip. If your student's school offers programs that include a mobile app, uh, like Classroom, Google Classroom, or Aries, if you uh, use that for your student information system, this is a great way to stay virtually connected to your student's learning environment. I suggest that parents check in with their school and or their teachers and make sure that you're downloading the correct app and that you have the correct credentials to access it. 
Sugerencias es baje la aplicación móviles de Canvas o de Google Classroom e inicie la sección en entorno al aprendizaje de su hijo. Asegúrese que tenga las contraseñas y los uh, nombres apropiados para poder acceder a estas um, páginas. So next up, troubleshooting connections. Uh, we do see students dropping from their online classrooms like Zoom or Meet once in a while. Uh, this will happen, so have the meeting link handy so you can rejoin the meeting as quickly as possible. Um, occasionally verify your speed at sites like speedtest.net. This is especially helpful if you're being dropped frequently um, or the quality of the classroom meeting is low. Checking your speed can help you understand if the problem is with your internet connection or something else. The other thing to consider is how many devices do you have connected to your network and what are they doing? If everyone in the family is home and each person is watching their favorite next Netflix show, this can slow the network down for students trying to connect to Zoom. Some equipment will also have limitations. So if your TV, oven, lights, security system, camera, Xbox, your five Amazon dots, and all your visiting family members are on the internet at the same time, your student's computer may be the device that is not allowed to connect to the network and they may be the ones that lose out. Muchos de los problemas de conexión tiene que ver con cuánta gente se está utilizando el sistema. Por ejemplo, uh, si eh, por casualidad o por error un estudiante se sale del salón, tiene que volverse a, a, a meter. Puede pasar, haga que levante la mano y le haga saber que tiene problema de acceso a su clase otra vez. Puede volverse a reunir una vez que entre los, el nombre y el código que se le ha dado. Muchas veces también se cae, por decirlo así, la línea o no tener recepción porque los sitios están congestionados y la velocidad de los aparatos tiene que ver mucho. Hay también que ver, por ejemplo, si tienen muchos aparatos dentro de casa que se están utilizando al mismo tiempo, va a causar eh, una reducción al acceso de la internet. Una forma de checar es utilizando la página de web speedtest.net y él les va a ayudar a encontrar qué tan rápido su equipo está trabajando. Entonces, para finalizar, ¿cuántos dispositivos o aparatos se están utilizando a la red y qué están haciendo? Eso va a afectar muchísimo la calidad y la velocidad dentro del salón de clase virtual. Si todos están utilizando, va a reducir la velocidad y puede ocasionar que se desconecte el sistema educativo. All right, I'm gonna try to take a few things out and speed this up just a hair. So bear with me here as I make some changes, but uh, many websites do offer that speed test that we just talked about. The easiest way to find one is to search for speed test in your favorite search engine. I like speedtest.net. Um, and if you're having tech problems, being able to provide the tech support team with the results of your speed test really help trouble the troubleshooting process. Utilizando esta página de, de internet de speednet, de, uh, speedtest, de, perdón. este les puede ayudar a ver qué es la velocidad de, dentro de su uh, computadora y el sistema. Esto les va a mantener activos y al tanto de lo que está pasando en su computadora. All right, so... Wi-Fi connections. Uh, one of the things that we often see is that the, your access point or the router that your company gives you is too far from the computer, from your student or your child's computer. So just checking that and making sure that they're as close as they can be will help, uh, oftentimes help the problem and, and get rid of the problem actually entirely. So um, that's the first one to always consider. Um, and is a microwave? or oven on. This one sounds funny, but appliances that use a lot of power can interrupt the wireless and create a poor connection. Try not to have your access point and learning space cross paths of the kitchen or of your kitchen. Um, you also don't want to have your devices near the kitchen if it's being used while your kids are in class. And then uh, when in doubt, go back to that speed test just to make sure that your connection is adequate. Uh, what we found is for Zoom specifically, three megabits per second, and that little test will give you uh, numbers in, in megabits per second. 
is uh, sufficient for a high definition connection. So just making sure you're using at least three megabits uh, or faster when you do that speed test. Um, let's see. And then just real quick, what's the difference between 2.4 and five gigahertz and which one is better? I, I know you see those numbers a lot. Um, you may see them on your devices. You may see them on the boxes of the equipment that you purchase. Um, bottom line is 2.4, Gigahertz is slower, but goes farther. So this frequency range is better at going through walls and can travel a longer distance, but the trade-off is that it'll be slower. So if you do have that instance where your device can't be close to your uh, access point or your router, choosing 2.4 to connect, 2.4 gigahertz to connect will give you a better connection. And then five gigahertz is faster, but does, does not go through objects well. So if you need a fast access and the access point is in the same room as the learning space, this is a great option. Con la conexión de internet, uh, lo de las uh, consideraciones es, veamos dónde está el punto de acceso de la, eh, la conexión del Wi-Fi. Donde, eh, dependiendo dónde se encuentre dentro de la casa, va a afectar el funcionamiento y la velocidad del aparato. Otro de los uh, aspectos que pueda causar fallas o retrasos en el acceso a la internet es eh, nuestros aparatos electrónicos. Por ejemplo, el microondas o los hornos eléctricos, otro tipo de um, equipo que utilice altas frecuencias puede afectar el acceso a nuestra internet. Es recomendable que durante el tiempo de clases no se utilicen estos equipos al mismo tiempo. También hablemos sobre la velocidad que utilizan para las conexiones. Eh, para un participante de Zoom se necesitan 3 megabytes, 3 punto megabytes o más. Y si usted hace la prueba de la velocidad basado en la uh, página que les proveímos hace unas uh, diapositivas atrás, puede ver si su conexión está al nivel. Hay otra pregunta que se ha hecho. ¿Qué es mejor el, si el 2.4 gigahertz que está frente o el 5 gigahertz? ¿Cuáles son las mejores opciones? Esto tiene que ver dependiendo de cómo lo quiere utilizar. Si su conexión está cerca, su router o su main, en, la, la entrada principal de la, uh, de la internet, usted la tiene cerquita, usted puede utilizar los 5 gigahertz. Es más rápido, pero no puede atravesarse a otros cuartos. Quiere decir que el, el, el sistema se queda dentro de un cuarto. Si utiliza la 2.4 gigahertz, es un poquito más lejos, pero puede alcanzar um, lugares más lejos. Y así en vez de estar en la cocina, puede irse a la recámara o a la sala y no va a haber interrupciones. Entonces, dependiendo de dónde se encuentra usted ubicado en la casa, usted puede manejar las velocidades de acuerdo a su funcionamiento o qué tan cerca o lejos esté dentro de, del aparato receptor de la Wi-Fi. All right, and a little on security. Um, you always want to use a router when connecting devices to the internet. Uh, th that's a bit of a moot point these days. Uh, most providers do provide you with a router of some sort and access point, but uh, my service provider, for example, did not. So I had to go to the store and purchase one. Um, and then on top of that, the, the key or the what provides security to that device is that you're making sure nobody can get into it. So changing the default password on it is crucial on your router. Um, you want to have antivirus, I think it was mentioned earlier, that's always a good thing. Um, Chromebooks, there's not a lot of antivirus for those and they actually take care of themselves, but certainly if you have a Microsoft or an Apple device, you want to consider antivirus software. Um, be careful of sites that offer free content. Um, they off, nothing's free, as they say, and so they're often looking for you to click on something, to click on an ad and, and uh, buy something or install something on your computer that you didn't want, so be careful. And with that, pay close attention to the pop-up ads on sites and read them thoroughly before accepting. Sometimes you think you're canceling the ad and you're actually hitting the okay button. So you wanna be real careful with that. And be cautious when entering personal information into websites. If you didn't go to the website intentionally to enter your information, then please don't enter it and give anybody on the, out on the internet your information. 
La seguridad es muy importante. Entonces necesitamos uh, tener precaución y poner bastante atención, mucha atención a lo que hacemos con nuestros aparatos. Utilice siempre un enrutador para conectar sus dispositivos de internet. Muchos proveedores de internet proveen esta cajita, en inglés le dicen router, ¿verdad? En español literal sería un enrutador. Eh, trate de cambiar la contraseña que está predeterminada uh, en el interfase del enrutador. Es muy importante que usted ponga una señal eh, o una contraseña que es fuerte. También tenga mucho cuidado de todos los uh, antivirus o todos los uh, programas que dicen ser grandes, uh, gratis, perdón. El, hay programas de antivirus que son gratis y que detectan páginas que no son, pues, así confiables. Tenga cuidado con los sitios que ofrecen contenido gratuito. Muchas veces estos no son gratuitos o hacen creer a la gente que están uh, uh, utilizando el sistema, pero en realidad no son seguros. Preste mucha atención, por favor, a las ventas, a las ventanas que de repente salen, ¿verdad? Con esos papas que le llaman de varios sitios, de sitios y lea cuidadosamente antes de aceptar cualquiera una de las aplicaciones. Tenga cuidado, por favor, al ingresar la información personal en los sitios web. No es muy seguro si no estamos seguros de lo que estamos haciendo. So a couple of ideas for safety. Um, first is making yourself aware of what's out there and educating yourself on what your kid has access to or what, your, what our students have access to. So commonsense.org offers a tremendous amount of quality content that helps you uh, through uh, little short videos that you can watch them together with your students and uh, just gives you some guidance on how to use the internet and what's safe. And then if you're want to take it to the next level and actually start monitoring and controlling the access that your students have throughout the day, whether you want to restrict access to, so they only are able to use the internet during school hours or you want to restrict where they can go. A great little tool is, uh, is it's called The Circle and it's at meetcircle.com. Um, and just, you can hit that website and dig around in there and kind of get some ideas of how that works. But it, essentially, you plug a little piece of equipment into your network and then you, on your smartphone, you can monitor what your kids are doing. It'll tell you how long they're spending online, where they're going, and you can create restrictions for them. Es muy importante eh, la seguridad. Por ejemplo, uh, commonsense.org puede proveer a ustedes videos o guías para que sepan qué es lo que, eh, cosas que son buenas para utilizar o las que tienen peligro al utilizarlas. Uh, también puede utilizar eh, lo que es uh, metthecircle.com. Este les va a ayudar a que filtren y ponga restricciones a las páginas de web que sus hijos tengan acceso, um, que no haya acceso libre, sino usted puede controlar qué es lo que pueden ver los estudiantes. Aparte de monitorear a sus hijos, cuánto tiempo están pasando en línea, en qué páginas y qué es lo que están haciendo dentro de esas páginas. Entonces, es muy importante tener la seguridad um, y que entendamos qué es lo que nuestros estudiantes están expuestos o cómo pueden ser afectados. I work very closely with my ed services team. They are the team that provides instructional support to our teachers. I ask them what they would share with parents and here were their thoughts. So many tech problems go away when the parents are present. They find that students sometimes use tech problems as an excuse for why they haven't participated in class or done their homework. Take a few minutes a day to check in with your students, ask them what technology they use for the day, ask them where they went online and ask them uh, what, what work they did in class today. Son los pensamientos que hemos um, encontrado uh, con referente a los servicios provee que se proveen. Muchos de los problemas técnicos ocurren cuando los padres no están en casa y desaparecen cuando los padres están en casa. Eh, los estudiantes a veces no hacen la tarea o dicen que tienen problemas porque no hay nadie que los supervise. Entonces es muy importante que 
padres cuando sea posible estén presentes para que sus hijos puedan acceder al material y estar dentro del salón de clase. También compruebe que, qué es lo que está haciendo su estudiante y cuándo. Su presencia es una de las mejores herramientas para mantener a los estudiantes concentrados y dentro del salón de clase. Por favor, tómense unos minutos al día para hablar con sus estudiantes. Pregúnteles qué tecnología utilizaron el día de hoy, qué es lo que están haciendo con la tecnología. Pregúnteles a dónde se conectaron, pregúnteles qué trabajo hicieron en clase hoy. Entonces, mantenga esa comunicación y por favor esté al tanto de lo que hacen sus hijos con la tecnología durante el día. And our last slide. Um, so my kids have taught me a lot uh, and they're great, but sometimes they like to test the boundaries and I think I have a little and, and I think have a little fun with me. Here are a couple of things that we have uh, discovered through our time distance learning. Keys like con the control key or the shift key can be disabled on devices like Chromebooks. This is a strategy we have seen so that devices seem unusable. So keep that in mind. If those keys stop working, the kids might have pushed some buttons. Uh, we have seen students using multiple devices to log into their Zoom session to play jokes and create disruptions in class. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, have the kids check all their extra tech until class is over. Um, really can help them stay focused and out of trouble. So with that, I want to um, take the time to thank everybody for um, staying tuned in to today's event. Thank you to all of our presenters and we truly hope that you found today's information to be extremely helpful. Um, what we're going to do is now we're going to begin and jump into our open forum where all of our presenter, presenters are going to be available to help answer any questions you might have. Muchas gracias eh, por estar con nosotros. Espero que lo que les hayamos proveído haya sido de gran servicio a ustedes. Y por favor, si tienen alguna pregunta, Póngala en el chat y estaremos listos ahorita para contestar cualquier pregunta de nuestros participantes. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for your presentation today. It was a good presentation that I got so many notes, I think seven or eight pages notes here. And like uh, we talk about some cognitive and like uh, physical tips for parents, but I think one other, one other important part is social and emotional learning through this process because in normal time, like uh, school and mindfulness teams or guidance teams help students, but like in uh, this pandemic process, they can't offer that much help. So what can parents do for social and emotional learning of their children? Thank you. Um, and someone that would like to answer? Well, I was going to jump in and say one of, one of the things that you can do is um, recognize that there is going to be stress and um, frustration, feelings of isolation. Um, it's okay to go ahead and acknowledge that and, and then just support your children in um, sticking with it, being resilient. Um, and, and just really being encouraging, you know, ask questions, um, how do you, you know, why, you know, how do you feel? Um, what can we do to help, um, alleviate some of the, your stress or, um, what, you know, um, what are some, what are, you know, just talk to your child and find out what they need. Um, sometimes it's just a, a matter of stepping away from the computer for a little bit and maybe engaging in some play and then coming back and resuming the session. And I don't know if my colleagues have some other ideas. Sure, I might add to that if I may. A particular area of emotional um, strength for the child is it's important to recognize that working on the computer can be stressful. And so you need to really pay close attention to how your child is doing. Um, there are times you just have to basically just say, let's, okay, let's, let's just take a break. Uh, let's do some deep breathing exercises or maybe doing some physical exercises, push-ups or sit-ups can help them out, but something to get their mind off of the stress. Uh, another thing associated with uh, helping the child navigate through that area 
it's important to just have them just have those moments where they can just do nothing for five minutes. Close their eyes and just do nothing. Think happy thoughts. And that can calm them down and actually ease some of the stress. Uh, yes, yes I, I would like to. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That I was going to say that um, I think the word important thing is uh, recognize. Uh, be empathetic with your child and recognize that there is an, uh, a need for something, you know. If they feel alone and they feel the stress and that they feel like uh, this is this is not helping me um, recognize, identify and talk through the um, with the child, what are their feelings, what are their experiences, and then ask them to provide you some suggestions of how, what they would like to see, or how do they feel they can change things to make it feel better. Um, give them some voice, because the right, we know right now, we, hear, we feel like nobody's hurting, uh, listening to us, and we're just being forced to be in front of a computer. So we want to talk to somebody and vent and let everybody know how we feel. So just let them, let them um, share how they feel. Yes, I agree with uh, previous comments. And I'd like to add the uh, uh, importance of uh, emotion. And yes, uh, emotion actually uh, closely related to our learning. So we have to address emotional issue and uh, readiness of our emotion for learning. And I believe uh, virtual learning is misrepresenting, actually distance learning actually uh, describing uh, current situation. So it is, learning is not limited to uh, computer and online activities. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, address, you know, a uh, child's basic needs. And uh, it is a really good opportunity actually, you know, for uh, collaboration with the teachers and collaboration with, uh, uh, you know, like uh, you know, faculty even, you know, university. So, you know, uh, and then we need to, uh, and then, um, you know, building good relationship with your uh, children. And then again, you know, addressing different needs of a child's academic needs and social needs and emotional needs. And, uh, and like, you know, our previous uh, presenters commented, yeah, uh, exercise is important. And then I like to emphasize uh, activities, you know, can be conducted at home. I uh, introduced, you know, importance of cooking. Yes, cooking involves, you know, uh, emotion. You know, you cook uh, for you know yourself, and then cook for others. So uh, it is a you know a good activity uh, involving child's emotion, and then you know volunteer activities. Uh, those we, you can also you know uh, explore. I'd like to add another area in the um, about social. Um, Many students are using Zoom, but as parents, you can actually purchase Zoom for about $15 a month. And the reason I mention that is because the social outlet for students, you can arrange for your child to actually have a Zoom meeting with their friends two or three times a week for a half an hour where they can just talk. And they just have a great time just talking and chatting it up. So that's something you can actually use that also can be used as an avenue to have them to do group work together where they can talk about assignments where they can't do this at length uh, in the classroom because the instructor may not use the breakout rooms or may not give them ample time. But basically, students get home uh, in a face-to-face -face environment. They get home and they talk about their lesson with their friends. They can do the same thing in the virtual world through Zoom. So consider that as well. These are great questions. Are there more? <laughs> yes. I think we have a couple in the chat. Michael, if you want to maybe read those off. Let's see. Okay, the first, uh, the first question I see here is, I know you spoke about different ways to support child with special needs. My child has 
ADHD and she has a very hard time completing her assignments. I've done pretty much all of your suggestions and it's honestly not helping. My biggest struggle is just basically getting her to do work. Sometimes it takes me over two hours to have her write four sentences. What can I do? I spend all day with her doing her schoolwork and her teacher says she should be done by two. I'm lucky if she's done by seven. So I was responding to that in the chat, but um, having taught several students with ADHD and suffered as an adult um, with my ADHD, some of the things that we can do to help students attend is um, give them something to hold while they're working so that that stimulation that they that they're able to stimulate both sides of their brain so they can focus on the schoolwork and at the same time um, stimulate that need to move around. So I would give my students um, those uh, like a squishy ball or something that they could hold in their hand. The other thing is, is that I would allow, I would use a partially inflated beach ball and I would put that on the child's seat and that way then they can move around and, and twist and everything and still attend to the classwork. Um, those are some of the challenges um, I can think of off the top of my head that might help your student attend a little bit better um, to what's happening. Um, being in this virtual environment is a challenge for our students who, who um, have uh, special needs. Um, and just having that patience with them and giving them opportunities to get up and walk around and then come back to the work, um, I think are all things that could help your child, but you might suggest maybe giving them a stress ball or something to hold on to while they're working. Um, it'll stimulate both sides of the brain, so that may help. Yes. Put I... music on the background too, so they can move, some kind of a beat. They like to move. <laughs> yeah. I. I, I can share your frustration and the problems uh, you're having with your child. And uh, uh, I can think of, uh, you know, uh, biological and physiological, you know, influence over ADHD, but uh, teachers, you know, uh, cannot do much about, you know, physiological, you know, factors. But teachers and then parents, you can do uh, about uh, uh, environmental, you know, uh, influences, uh, like I discussed in my, uh, you know, presentation about uh, uh, prompts and then cues, and then also rewards and uh, and distractions uh, from the environment. They need uh, to uh, focus on the task. They need to learn, you know. Uh, so if they uh, you know, if they are in a good learning environment, again, you know, their behavior must be uh, guided and uh, with the prompts and cues. And uh, it, it has been, you know, uh, it should be, uh, uh, it should require a longer time. You know, many children's problem behaviors are rooted for a long time. So unlearn takes place also a long time. So, uh, you know, for that, for, you know, particular child, uh, I would like to, you know, first uh, evaluate the child's uh, level of uh, problems, then I can suggest, but uh, yeah, that's uh, my uh, general uh, tip can provide you about uh, what, uh, you know, we can do with environmental, you know, uh, factors. Let me add there that uh, in addition to the suggestions that Dr. Klemau has made about physical things and objects that you can give to the child uh, uh, to at least allow them to still keep moving while they are working. Uh, if you're spending two hours trying to get a student to write four sentences, I would suggest that you also try to break those work time into smaller chunks. Instead of sitting down with that child for two hours, if you can choose to do 15 minutes uh, to do uh, one sentence, take a break for another 15 minutes and come back and do another sentence for 15 minutes, that child will be less frustrated, you will be less frustrated. So along with providing those other supports, 
it's important to structure those work time in smaller chunks of time. So if you're cooking, you can step away and do your cooking, put a timer, 15 minutes, we're ready to come back. Go and do whatever you want to do, you tell to the child, we'll get back in 15 minutes. When you put that kind of structure in place, it will help uh, that child to still accomplish. So you will not, you might still end up spending, you know, that two hours, but you're spending it in a combination of productive time as well as relaxing free time. So that, that's one suggestion I'll make for you. Yes, I'd like to add uh, more. Uh, uh, it is, uh, we need to address child uh, motivation to learn. You know, child, uh, it might be a motivation problem. Child is not interested in those tasks because it is not related to their life. And they need to see, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, relevance to their life. And then also they need to see uh, the consequence after their behavior they're getting. And then another reason they are not interested is that they are not ready. And they are not, uh, you know, uh, their uh, prerequisite skills uh, they don't have. So we need to teach prerequisite skills if, they, if your child has problem in writing, you know, we need to teach, uh, analyze the prerequisites, we teach those before we ask a complex task. Thank you. I, uh, I saw a question in the chat about um, a parent asking about a child who might be um, nervous or shy about being on camera. And a way to scaffold that may be allow the child to create an avatar first, which is a, a likeness of the child, but isn't necessarily them. And they can actually um, program that avatar to speak. And sometimes that will um, remove the shyness as they you know, become successful. Um, sharing in a classroom, then the shyness tends to fall back a little bit, but allowing them to make an avatar first might be might be helpful. Dr. Kimo, you took the words right out of my mouth. I'd like to add to that, that in addition to the uh, avatar, you could have the student just basically once every 15 minutes, just click the um, camera on and off, just so people would know they're there and eventually they'll feel more comfortable not only seeing themselves, but knowing that their friends will see them as well. Okay, friends, um, we have gone way beyond the time we planned, but you can see that this has been a productive time together. Um, I want to say a big thank you to all our speakers. And I want to thank Jim and Judy for sticking with us all through. Thank you for your participation. And Robert, thank you for your support. Parents, um, this is our first try at this. We're going to have another session on the 24th. And that session is going to start at 2 o'clock because we wanted to vary the time to make sure that uh, uh, parents who are not able to make morning session can do the afternoon session. We want to encourage you to invite your friends. Um, we have focus for that particular session on high school and middle school. So we can speak more specifically to the uh, needs of our kids who are at that age level. Uh, thank you for coming. Pass the message to your friends. If you have questions, feel, please uh, keep adding it to the chat box because we, we will respond to all of them. We are putting together a website. This, this event is video recorded and we're going to put it out on our website. So we want to continue to engage with you and continue to provide support however we can. The Watson's Literacy Center is a community service agency that is focused on helping 
kids who are struggling in their reading skill. Even right now, while schools are closed, we are offering a virtual tutoring to students. And I want to compliment Andrea Street, who is with us today, who is the director of the uh, Literacy Center for the work they are doing. So we continue to move forward to advance the goal of that literacy center and our College of Education. Thank you all for attending. Gracias. Y hagan preguntas en español. Las podemos contestar también en español. The same, we're asking, we're, we're asking for Spanish questions. They're welcome. We'll, we'll translate them and send them all of them. Gracias por participar a todos. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Just want to remind everyone also, you'll be getting a survey soon. Make sure you fill out the survey. We want to hear, hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Van a recibir una uh, especie de cuestionario que vamos a mandarles a ustedes para que lo contesten. Le agradecemos su participación y muchísimas gracias por estar el día de hoy con nosotros. Fue un placer. Hasta pronto.